Alrighty. Okay. Hell yeah. Happy Batman Day to all of you. A totally real holiday. Not a made-up holiday. I just want to make that clear. It's not a holiday made up by DC Comics to sell uh, movie tickets or comic books. Batman Day is a real holiday. And we're all going to be celebrating it together. As Batman intended. He all wants us to come together, put aside our differences, and just celebrate everything that makes Batman so wonderful. I'm glad that I have all of you here to join me in this, in this wonderful special day, because we'd be nowhere without the Cape Crusader. Gotham would be overrun with all kinds of madness and crime. So we really have to seriously hand it to Batman. Like, everybody just give Batman a round of applause right now. Before we begin tonight, this is for you, Batman. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, okay, now let's begin. <laughs> Greetings, I'm your host, Dr. Wolfula, and welcome to Doc's Game Room, where I live scream Batman games for your dangertainment. Tonight, I'll be continuing my series of Batman Let's Play live streams with Batman Arkham Knight. Not really my favorite of the Arkham series. In fact, I maybe would rank it fourth best in the main series ones. It's better than, I guess, Arkham Origins Lockdown, but it's still an enjoyable game. Just has a lot of Batmobile in it. Just a lot. But it's still good. Still a good game. But uh, just has a lot of Batmobile in it. Like, like a ton. A ton of Batmobile. And somehow they made the Batmobile not super great, but uh, I think we'll still have an enjoyable time. And, uh, you know, Kevin Conroy is always a hoot as the Batman. Rest in peace to the great Kevin. Now, also rest in peace to Arlene Sorkin, who passed away. She's not in this game, unfortunately, but her character is in this game, so there, there is that. Rest in peace to two greats. We wouldn't really have a Batman that we have today without Harley Quinn and Batman, well... Kevin Conroy Batman specifically. I mean, yeah, of course we wouldn't have Batman. But anyway, before I begin, just want to remind you guys that if you haven't seen my new riff you with Goulash on the Gulag channel of Scooby-Doo the Mystery Begins, check it out after this stream. I'd appreciate it. Link in the description. And make sure to subscribe to the Gulag channel. And also, you know, every Sunday I have a movie night stream. Next one is Psycho 2. Every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time slash 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with my Patreon supporters and channel members. So if you want to support the channel, link in the description. I'd appreciate it. And you get a movie night every week. Now, let's begin the actual game stream tonight. I'm playing on PC. The superior way to play this game for now because there is still no PS5 or Xbox Series remaster. There should be. But uh, this is the only way you can play this game in 60 FPS. So, you know, I gotta go on PC. I gotta go with PC. Now, the thing I just want to let you guys know ahead of time is there is a song that plays, a Frank Sinatra song that plays in the opening of the game. So the opening is just, just going to be muted, but I will sing the song for you. So don't worry. I don't own the rights to it, but I, I, I think I could still get away with singing it. So let's start this playthrough. Hell yeah. Here we go. A classic Frank Sinatra tune that you can't hear. Only I can hear it, and it's pretty good. Great song. I like a little bit of a homage to Jerry Robinson there. I got you under my skin. I got you deep in the heart of me. So deep in my heart, you're a part of me. I got you under my skin. So deep, so deep and deep. You're just a part of my skin. You're in that skin. All kinds of uh, skin. Ew, that's some gross skin, actually. Yeah, a part of me. Yeah. All right, let's cremate this son of a bitch. Hell yeah. Okay, now we're almost past the copyrighted part of this playthrough. Just a little bit further. Here we go. All right. Burn the hell out of that guy. Okay. This All right. This is how the Batman dies. 
And Batman totally dies in this game. You know? No more Batman things after this game came out. Rocksteady definitely doesn't plan on retconning the end of this game by having Batman just still alive, just as his regular Batman self. No, no. He dies in this then, game. We waited. Gotham braced itself for the inevitable power struggle, but it didn't come. There's Polly's Paul Diner. It's never been quite clear if that's a Paul he Dini reference, was coming. but Polly's Diner is seen in uh, Arkham Asylum. Hopefully it's a Paul Dini reference. This game, why did, why did, why is it pausing? Am I pressing? Okay, I think maybe I pressed a button. Sorry about that. Paul Dini is not involved in the writing of this game, unfortunately, and I think it led to this game not having as good of a story. This game's story is quite a mess from the uh, previous two, but uh, it's still an okay story, I guess. You know, it's fine. Gets the job done, I think. Uh, actually, let me check. Let me make sure I'm not fucking things up right now. All right, okay. Let's continue. King of the Fat has a super chat. Doc, would you say the murder of Bruce Wayne's parents was a blessing in disguise for the city Thanks. and people of Gotham? No um, I don't know, because Thanks, it just seems a little weird that when Batman arrived, so? you started having, like, super criminals like Two-Face and the Joker and shit. Um, so maybe uh, more harm than good was done, but, you know, since they're around, we still need Batman, you know? He's definitely you say, doing some good, but... Uh, I don't know, he did, like, push that guy into the vat of acid that made the Joker, so, uh... But just so you know, in this game, you don't play as Batman, you play as a cop at a diner. It's more of like a, um... A walking simulator kind of thing. With some, like, interactive story narrative shit. But, uh... You know, this is the real defender of Gotham, a police officer, you know. Gotta hand it to the police of Gotham. They're really the ones who are keeping this city held together. And yes, this game takes place on Halloween. Um, so that's pretty cool. Look at, it. Look at this place. Oh, you can just get candy. Oh, man, I want to eat some candy right now. Damn, eat me. Oh, man, I wish. Someday we'll have, like, fully interactive games where you can just grab some candy from a cauldron in the game and just it'll be the same thing that's gonna be great i do have to hand it to them this opening sequence they really did make a very convincing very convincing immersive diner this looks like something out of a bethesda game or something but even more scripted so it seems a little bit more believable and real every animation is is, you know, is handcrafted. Just, you know, very natural for something that you kind of could just be finished playing in like a couple minutes. But yeah, let's continue. Oh, but look at this. Oh man, this Halloween Gotham atmosphere. I could play this forever, but now I have to turn off my body cam and talk to this smoking customer. Let's get this done. Oh God, oh, okay. Glad I turned off my body cam because I'm fucking this guy up right now. Okay, let's do this. Just gotta grab my firearm and, oh no, okay, yeah. I knew it. All these fucking customers have turned into monsters. All right, let's take care of business. All right, grab my weapon. Okay, I need to dispatch, especially these smaller looking customers because they are most likely demons. Let's do this, come on. Come on, let me, let me, let me fucking shoot you in the fucking face, dude. All right, hell yeah, let's get this done. Let's get this party started. Ah, oh, shit. Damn it. This always happens to me. Oh, well. Uh, King of the Fan has the super chat. Would you rather move to Gotham City or Raccoon City from Resident Evil? Gotham City? You know, you can at least live a normal life here. You don't have to worry about getting nuked. Well, I guess in Dark Knight Rises you do have to worry about that. Never mind. Tomorrow, this will seem like Johnny Charisma. Some uh, foreshadowing. Gotham, this now they recast um, the voice of Scarecrow from Asylum and got an actual famous actor, a famous British guy actor. He's been in a lot of things. I know his face. I can never remember his name. It works okay, but I do kind of miss the more cartoony Scarecrow voice. Um, 
I feel like that could have worked just as well, especially since Scarecrow is kind of a red herring. He seems like he's a major villain, but he really isn't in this game. Like, they really sold Scarecrow. But there isn't really a strong central... I guess he is technically the only real ultimate villain in the end of this game, but he's not really... He just doesn't have a great presence. He ends up getting for overshadowed by other stuff. Not so many. It was kind of neat, I guess, to see a Scarecrow story front and center at least. Oh man, that guy's screwed. The only people left on the streets are the sort that enjoy the chaos. I do gotta say, I was super hyped for this game. When Arkham Origins came out, I was a little afraid that Rocksteady wasn't gonna make another Batman game for whatever reason. I don't know why I thought that. But then they announced this right after Origins came out, and I was like, hell yeah! More Rocksteady! And now it's really sad that Rocksteady is not really a company anymore. Like, they're not really the same company they were. The directors of these games, Sefton Hill, he's left the company. Warner Brothers completely ruined them. I saw the gameplay for that Suicide Squad game. It looks like shit. Doesn't have the same tone as these games, the same art direction. The gameplay is just bog standard uh, games as service. It's, it's depressing. Like, it's genuinely depressing. Hopefully the delay of that Suicide Squad me game means they're actually going to make it something special, but I don't know. But, uh, you know, I guess we can kind of pretend that this is Rocksteady's final, final true game. And, you know, it's not their best, but definitely has the most effort. Clearly. This game still holds up today, at least visually, and you know, gameplay-wise and everything. Just the story. I never was a big fan of it, but let's begin our patrol as Batman. Like, look at this. This... You could release this game today on PS5. At 60 frames per second, people would be like, yeah, this looks like a fucking current-gen game. Like, eight years later. This game came out nearly a decade ago. Covenant... As a super chat, thank you, Covenant. John Noble is the name of the actor for Scarecrow in this one. He also voiced Unicron in Transformers Prime. Yeah, I know that guy and things, but I can never remember his name. He doesn't have the most memorable name, but it's a great voice, great actor. Though I do miss, I don't know, I, there's a few recasts in this game. They recast the actress who plays Oracle in this with a younger sounding actress. I guess they wanted Oracle to sound a little bit more, I guess vulnerable like some somebody like who isn't as like experienced so you sympathize with her in dangerous situations but i i miss i prefer the ashley from mass effect voice for oracle i don't know i, I feel like some of these casting decisions were a little too arbitrary because i don't know it's always weird when it's like most of the same voices are there but then there's just like a couple that are different and you're like what the hell happened uh, King of the Fat has a super chat. Did you go to Halloween Horror Nights this year? And what was your favorite and least favorite maze? I'm going to be going again on Thursday, but I went last Friday. I had a decent time, but I went on... Um, I, I I tried to actually record the mazes because I wanted to try to be sneaky and record the mazes and have some footage for videos, but... The second maze I went on, the guy caught me, like, I was being sneaky in the way where I hid the, I hid my camera in, like, a pocket. But somehow the security guard knew, knew I had it and told me to get it out and delete all the contents. But unbeknownst to him, half the contents were already backed up in the cloud. But still, that was really annoying and embarrassing. And the footage wasn't actually even good. It wasn't worth using because the houses are so dark inside. You can't see see very clearly there's just occasional flashes so it's kind of unless you have like a really great camera that's also like hit uh, you can hide easily you're not going to be recording anything in the houses anyway but uh yeah you know it's whatever but uh, my favorite house i only went on three um so i guess my favorite one was the universal monsters one it was kind of it had like in the invisible man the Invisible Man, I think a hunchback was in it, too. I wasn't totally sure about the story, but uh, I enjoyed that one. I kind of liked The Last of Us House, but um, I, I, it, it felt like it didn't have enough of the Cordy set zombies in it. Like, kind of like the game, I guess, in the show. You know, you don't... 
The characters try to avoid those zombies, so you don't really get to see them that much in the actual things, but I don't know. I'm not that scared of, like, a... Uh, of, like, a survivor, human survivor popping out with, like, a machete at me. That's not as scary. With the evacuation, I just don't have... Oh, man, I gotta catch up. If you find it, tell your men not to engage. I'll deal with it. Do you really think Scarecrow's crazy oh, man. enough to detonate? Okay, I really gotta catch up with these chats real quick. Uh, Nicole L has a super chat. Money for Reese's peanut butter cups. Enjoy. Thank you. And Xavier says, just beat the story for MK12-1, and it's just all right. I don't know what MK is, but uh, I'm Chemical glad you did. Gotham. Magic Kingdom? Yeah. And thank you for the very generous super chat, Demarcus. Really appreciate it. It's going to be a long night. Country Shape asks, Dr. Wolfie, what would you say to a Batman Halloween crossover, Elseworld, Elseworld story, where a child's extreme exposure to Scarecrow's fear toxin results in the Michael Myers? Never a damn time. Ha! Huh. So a canonical Michael Myers. I don't know. I feel like Michael Myers, he wouldn't be caused by, like, a fear toxin or something. He would be like, you know. He'd just be like a guy who's suddenly evil for no reason. He's like the joke. Well... I, I don't know. Joker has like a whole bunch of different origin stories. And I guess, I don't know, that Three Jokers comic that might have been an Elseworld story, I guess, kind of canonized his, at least one of his origin stories. But I always think of Joker as just kind of like appearing out of nowhere. More likely. Like, no clear, like, you know, the possibilities for where he comes from, but he's like Michael Myers, where he just suddenly, just suddenly is just in Gotham, causing, causing havoc, causing shit to go down, and, like, it's fun to, like, present the possibilities of where he came from, but there's no, like, definitive answer kind of a deal -y. All right, let's, uh... Answer the bat signal and kick some fucking ass right now. Hell yeah. Finally, I'm kicking some ass. These guys are just hanging out, too. They're not doing anything. I'm sh I mean, sh sure, they're like carrying bats. Aw, oh, shit. Forgot. You gotta avoid the tackling, guys. All right. No, no, no. I don't think so, pal. I should have practiced before I did this. But, you know, it's like uh, putting on a glove. In this game, there's no combo bat swarm. Instead, you can pick up weapons and attack guys with them. I don't know. I missed the combo bat swarm. But I guess they were like, it's not realistic. Where is he creating these bats? Hey, Batman. I guess I guess, I guess, guess they replaced the bats with being able to pick up bats, though. So I guess it's kind of the same thing. All right. Okay. I, I see what they did then. <laughs> All right. King of the Fat has a super chat. Did you go into the Chucky maze? Um... And thank you for the generous Over super here. chat, uh, King of the Fat. I did not go into the Chucky maze. I'll probably go into it on Thursday, though, next Thursday. But uh, I just You're didn't safe. have time. I went to Halloween Horror Nights super late. I, I did get the here. express tickets that made it so you could skip lines once. So that ended up making it so I could uh, do more houses than I probably could have done in the wrong. short time I had. But uh, next Thursday, I'll I'm going to just... I'm going to be... Basically, I think I'm hardly going to be there all all day and all night. So that's going to be fun. Not going to have express tickets this time, though. So it's going to be on my own getting through those fucking long-ass lines. All right, time to even the odds. Here we go. So just moments after actually getting to fight guys as Batman, you're already in the fucking Batmobile. And you know what? It looks cool. It does look cool. I need to track that military vehicle. I admit I'm not super into I'm not really into um I'm not really into I guess the modern takes on the Batmobile though. I'm not into like the tank designs that they keep insisting on nowadays. I kind of miss a more subtle Batmobile that's a little bit more quiet, like something Batman can actually sneak around in, like not cause a huge scene anytime he arrives, like, busting down walls and shit. But, um, you know, it looks cool. Oh, I forgot you have to, like, 
start the Batmobile up, otherwise it'll just keep fucking rotating around. The Batmobile is a controversial aspect of Arkham Knight. It's not my favorite part of the game. There's too many sequences where it's forced on you. It would have been cool as like an optional thing for missions and stuff, and sometimes you use it for the main, for the main uh, campaign, but the Batmobile is half of the game at least. It's half of the game. A lot of boss battles in the game are done with the Batmobile. You don't get to fight. There's like a boss battle with Deathstroke, AKA Slade completely in the Batmobile. You get, don't get to fight him in person in this game, like in Arkham Origins. It's just, it's not great, but you know, it's, it's functional. It's, it can be a little hard to control at first, but I've gotten the hang of it. Um, there's some really frustrating sections with the Batmobile though, that just, just a fucking pain in the ass to play. driver will get away. Okay, well, it told me to exit the Batmobile over here. I'm like so far away, Batman. Our only lead to finding Scarecrow. What? I did not know you could fail that. Oh shit! Wow, I just learned something. My reign of terror. Damn. Okay. Um, King of the Fat as a super chat. I also love the bugs maze and the chupacabra maze. And of course, since I went with my dad, who's Dominican, he was able to translate what some of the <laughs> scare actors were saying. I have not checked out that maze. I guess I'll have to try to do all of the mazes in one night. Now let's do this again. I did not know you could fail that part. Um, I, I can't believe that guy could actually get away after crashing his car. I just learned something, wow. Um, <laughs> let's try to make sure that doesn't happen this time. Let Batman deal with this. I think we're gonna be finding out all kinds of new ways you can you can lose in this game while I play it. I'm trying to stop him, Gordon. I'm gonna do it. Do my best. This time, you're not getting away, pal. This time, I'm gonna be paying attention. I won't let you get away this time. Tank guy. All right. I guess that's why they slow down the Batmobile. <laughs> they like don't want you to fail it. All right. Let's interrogate this piece of shit. Is that Jason Statham? Go to hell. Oh yeah. Big mistake, pal. King of the Fat says no, that was last year. I was thinking it was last year, the the the, the mazes you described, because I went on those mazes. Yeah. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure if they had like similar mazes from last year again. If you're lying. I'll break the other one. Oh no. I guess I missed a super chat. Nicole Ellis says, Doc, you missed a first time super chat. Well, let me fix that and uh, see what I missed. Did I? Let's see. I don't know. I'm, see I'm looking through all this. It seems like I got all of them. I don't know. I don't see it. Yeah, I... I I don't know, I went back to the beginning of the chat, I don't see it, but, um... If you're talking about your peanut butter... Your peanut butter, uh, super chat, I appreciate it. And happy Batman day to you as well, Tevya Smoka. Analysis I've just uploaded. Sure. Happy Batman day to all of us. Scarecrow's new toxin. An uncontaminated sample. You're not kidding. I don't know why I'm walking Cause around so much. This was super cool to me, though. To this holographic display popping out of his fucking... This is the break we've been his for. glove. Oh, man, his gauntlet. That looks so cool. There's lots of cool things where I'm like, I really wish they could have just kept making these Batman games. Um, maybe giving them to, I guess, WB, the engine, because, I don't know, a lot of these assets, like, it feels like... Feels like they kind of go into waste. I'm forgetting this is not GTA, and that's you don't use the Y button. All right. Okay, let's go. Honestly, not a big fan of the control scheme for the Batmobile. Um, because trigger, the, place. the right trigger, essentially is the uh, gas pedal, but the, but the uh, reverse, to reverse in the Batmobile, you have to use 
the X button. I don't, that's like just bad. That's dumb. I don't know what they were thinking. Ugh. Such a bad control scheme. Ugh. Do your worst. The boredom is killing me. All right, time to kick some more ass. Honest Dave says, try reading something besides Super Chats. I have been reading some things, but the issue is I'm distracted by playing a game, so there's just lots of things I need to keep up with. I'm sorry, Super Dave. I'll read Papa Jupiter's Super... Well, not Super Chat. I'll read Papa Jupiter's comment. Going to be my son's first Halloween. Can't wait to go trick-or-treating with you. Well, I'm proud of your son because he's going to have the best, best Halloween time with his father... I'm guessing, I'm guessing your son is Pluto then. That's gonna be fun. Oh boy, they need to make a Halloween special of the Hills Have Eyes. Very special Hills Have Eyes Halloween special, because I think that would be a great time. Sir, Batman, he's here. Were you expecting? Take the shot already. Blow that green bitch's head off. Do it. Take a look at the chamber. Cosmic Wanderer says, love you, Doc. Been a fan since 2015. You always get me into the right yeah, Halloween Zachary. spirit. Well, thank We're you. Mad Dog McCree says, is the Demon Knight review coming soon, Doc? Um, it's, it's in the works. Um, there's some other stuff I need to do first. I keep forgetting about that, but I, I, you remind me, though. <laughs> Oh man, King of the Fat. Like a little natural immunity. I'm kind of surprised by the amount of super chats King of the Fat is sending. Um, hopefully, uh, well, you can afford all that. <laughs> but uh, all right, let me catch up on both of them. King of the Fat says, "I like. I'm extremely excited for the Chucky maze because next to." Because next to Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, and Freddy Krueger, Chucky is one of my favorite slashes. You know, he's not one of my favorites, but he's he's pretty cool. I would have liked, I don't know, I know they did a Halloween maze last year, but I can always go for Michael Myers, you know? Hopefully they do another Jason and Freddy what one. What are you doing here? King what of the Fat Jet has another super chat. Like, I don't know if you remember that drawing I sent you with the little Tell girl me. opening Chucky for Christmas. I don't know. I don't remember that one. I remember some of the other drawings you sent me, but I don't, plant in Gotham. I don't remember that one. <laughs> it started with a meeting. Ninarzaval asks, "Do you plan on playing more c puppet combo games?" I think I could go for it, but at the same time, I'm a little scared of playing more puppet combo games just because I'm like, just because that uh, Halloween one was just so fucking. That was the idea. So fucking annoying to play. Like I know on purpose, but I'm a little afraid. I don't know. And when I came to. Some of the other ones are gonna be just as frustrating, but I guess I should give him a it's shot. It's such a shame that his vile toxin has no effect on me. Nature always wins. BM LED asked, "Would you ever play Terror Drome again? It's a cool game." Would yeah, I, I guess I should give that game another uh, try in a stream. Especially since we're never gonna have a, an actual official version of it. That's never gonna happen, guys. If you're hoping they'll make a horror fighting game with all your favorite uh, villains, coming with me. probably not going to happen. I guess the closest you thing is maybe Dead ask. by Daylight, but that's not a fighting game. Maybe the developer that's could wrong. make a fighting game and just use all the existing licenses. Maybe that's how it could work, but I don't know. I'd prefer a fighting game over an asymmetrical multiplayer thing, that's for go, sure. Go, go. We've got the target, sir. He's cornered. Don't move. I like that little cartoon Batman on the, uh, on the, uh, display right there. Good. So, the game makes sure to go out of its way to point out that all the tanks you fight don't have people in them. They're all remote-controlled tanks, so you can blow them up. Which, you know, I would think to kind of make things tricky for Batman, they'd actually put people in these tanks so he can't just blow them up. But, uh, you know, making things easy for Batman. I guess I appreciate that, you know. All right, now I'm in the actual tank mode of the Batmobile. Though I didn't get to do any of that. That was all automated. 
So, not a great start, but I guess I'm gonna have some tank action now, though. All right, let's do this. Let's blow unmanned tanks up. One of my least favorite parts of this game, honestly. Yeah. Whoever, whoever pitched this idea, hopefully they are not currently working at Rocksteady. Um, because. This shit sucks. But essentially, I guess it's an interesting tank mini game because essentially they have these very obvious um, lasers that tell you the, traje the trajectory of their attacks. So you just have to kind of dodge out of the way and hit them. I don't know why they'd want you to be able to anticipate where they're going to hit you. Maybe this is just part of the Batmobile's HUD and it's not actually a laser that's being projected out of the tanks, but if it is a laser being projected out of these tanks, you know, probably not the best design decision, but all right. Tevia says, I don't think the idea of the tank was a bad the idea. Of understatement um, I think it was an all right idea. Because, you know, it's kind of like in Dark Knight Returns, Batman has the big tank version of, ba of the Batmobile, and he's just going to town with rubber bullets and explosions and stuff. That looks cool. My issue with the tank and the Batmobiles is there's just too many sequences that rely on the Batmobile. Like, the game constantly comes up with excuses for you to use the Batmobile when you shouldn't really need to. Like... Batman figuring out a way to get a bat the Batmobile inside a building so he could use it for a thing. It's just, ah, uh, it's just, it gets old after a while. Thanks for the super chat, Crawberry. Fans were asking for a Batmobile for years, so they gave it to them in full. Yeah, you know, I guess they were just like, we did everything we could with Batman, so let's really focus on this one thing we didn't get to do up until this point. And activate missile barrage. And, you know, I think part of that, I don't know, I would really like to see um, more of an open world Batman game, but I feel like the reason why they keep evacuating Gotham, having Gotham be these empty places, is just for the sake of like, at least for this game, is just for the sake of being able to have the Batmobile and not have to worry about crashing into civilians putting people into danger. Yeah. Thank you for the super chat, Ricky. I Hi, Doc. Happy Batman Day. You got jump scared yet? This non-horror game has plenty of them, and the Batmobile was the worst mechanic in this game. This... The Batmobile is fucking scary, man. It's... It's so scary. It's... I'm... I'm terrified while playing as the Batmobile. I mean, actually, there are some scary parts with the Batmobile. There are some scary parts. There's a section where you have to be stealthy while using the Batmobile because a giant nearly invincible tank is after you. That's pretty scary. That's kind of tense. I know Kevin Conroy. I got it handled. Gotta love these tutorials. Ah. Funny Clown asks, Doc, what is the worst game you've ever played on or off stream? Um, let me think. Okay, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, okay, that's easy. Um, there was this game for the Wii U. It was a quote-unquote horror game called The Letter. And it was essentially like a walking simulator thing where you just kind of are in a, a bunch of creepy environments, but it all basically just used Unity assets. It just, it looked like shit. There was no gameplay to it. It was just kind of, kind of really shitty. You could beat it in 10 minutes. Um, just a bad game, yeah, you know. Look, look it up sometime, because once you see the letter, you'll, you'll know how bad it is. It's, I'm heading there now. It's, it's, it's fucking garbage. It's one of those things where it's like, the trailer for it made it seem like it was kind of spooky, kind of like a low-res slender kind of thing, but it's really shitty. It's one of those things where if you had a Wii U, you're just like, all right, well, this is what I'm stuck with, playing, because there's just nothing else coming out. Uh, but the fucking letter. 
Oh yeah, let's uh, do a missile barrage. Oh, I love, I love the tank mobile. It's so fun. I mean, I guess breaking stuff is pretty fun. I kind of wonder who's gonna end up paying for all this property damage. Hopefully Bruce Wayne has it covered, because if not, oh man, Gotham is screwed. All right, oh, oh, no, no, not gonna get me. All right, where's the last guy? There you are. Bye. I think that takes care of that. Hell yeah. Jim, tell your men they can resume their patrols. Ricky says the letter was like a low-budget Slenderman game. Not really. It seemed like it might have been, but there was nothing chasing you in the game. Like the Slenderman. At least with Slender, there's like a, you know, there's like a, an enemy you need to avoid. In the letter, you're just kind of picking up letters that have vague story stuff, but then it turns out at the end it's all just a dream you were having. And there's nothing chasing you or anything. It's just kind of spooky, empty construction sites and buildings. I don't know, it's just... It's pretty bad, I don't know. It's definitely the worst game I've ever played. Definitely the worst game I've ever paid money for. Good to have you here, Batman. Bring her down to the lockup on the lower level. Hmm, that's a good frisk, eh? Hell yeah. Alrighty, time to meet Commissioner Gordon again. I already met him. But uh, I guess I get to see him again. I miss that guy. And uh, Commissioner Gordon is played by that guy from Breaking Bad. They had a different Commissioner Gordon voice in all of these Arkham games. Four different Commissioner Gordon voices. It's it's insane. I don't know why they kept recasting Gordon. I guess they couldn't settle on a voice they liked. I guess they wanted, I don't know. I guess in the first two... Rocksteady Arkham games, they were just like, it doesn't really matter who we get to play Gordon because he doesn't really have that much of an effect on the plot. But I guess in this one, they were like, okay, he's kind of ha has a lot of heavy character arc stuff going on, so we need to make sure we get a guy who can sell that stuff pretty well. Still, I don't know. <laughs> Why do you even bother with these meat sacks? Same Poison Ivy voice all three games, though. on the streets. We don't have the manpower or the equipment. Well, look who it is. Ivy. Well, Country Shape Media one. asks, ever play yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's? I have. I streamed the original game on a really shitty computer oh, good. that had yeah, two yeah. gigabytes of RAM, so it could not really honestly play it. Um, so uh, luckily now I have an uh, actual gaming computer, so I could actually you know, stream and play things competently, but yeah, I didn't have any cash back then to <laughs> spend on any good computer stuff. God, that was, that sucked. I could barely run the first level of Five Nights at Freddy's, but I could definitely not run the subsequent levels. Like, they just got more demanding on that really shitty computer. And that isn't a uh, fucking amazing looking game, a technical marvel of a game or anything and it still couldn't fucking run on that computer that piece of shit computer all the games i'd fucking play on that thing just could not could not could not run well it sucked now i've got a computer with uh, with a 4070 ti graphics card and uh, 32 gigs of ram and a 5900x uh, fucking cpu oh, yeah Poor, sir. Now we're talking. Screw you. Damn bureaucrats. We're on our own. We can handle it, Jim. What's the Man, list? Gordon, you're looking kind of paunchy. Cropping up all over Remember in city. Arkham Asylum, yes. he was fucking yoked. He was so all fucking right, shredded see. in that game. Now he just kind of looks like a regular Who's old man. Up? We've lost contact with the fire crew. Now, this part is basically the game pitching itself as an open world game with, like, missions you can do. I don't have to do any of these, though. Then there's this. It's a strange... Not gonna do them. Body turned up. Some of them are cool, but, uh... But the forensics boys seem freaked out. Let's focus on the, um... The main stuff. Several sightings of the Riddler creeping around... Aaron Cash. Knowing that guy, he's gotta be up to no good. Look, Lindsay H. asked, do you like the Max you Harley Quinn show? Save lives. I haven't watched Don't a lot worry, of it Jim. yet. Um, maybe I'll give it a shot sometime. I, can do. 
I guess I'm not so into I've got a skeleton crew some of the broader humor out. I've seen. I know it's a, a show about broads, but here. some of the, I don't know. I saw like one clip, like it really emphasizing, like really, it feels like a show that really drives jokes into the ground. Like I saw, I don't know, some clips about Nightwing's ass where it's like, oh yeah, this meme thing in the fan base. Yeah, Nightwing got a big juicy ass all right I, I okay i get it all yeah all right <laughs> I'm not sure about it but yeah uh, let's kick yep. scarecrow's ass already you ain't gonna be able to live with him the funny thing about these games is they all take place on one night but this game's campaign just to do the main mission it will take you 20 hours so this is a very long halloween night Honestly, I really wish I had a Halloween night that took me 20 hours. That'd be so great. Uh, I guess it's nice that it's a long game. This is the longest of the Arkham games, but... It's kind of crazy to think it all takes place on one night just because that's the format. And there's uh, not Morgan Freeman playing uh, Lucius Fox in this game. That's something I do appreciate, is that after Morgan Freeman played Lucius Fox, it was just all agreed upon that he just sounds like Morgan Freeman. It's like the only voice we can... Why? Ah, oh, man, I hate the fact that you can't jump out of the Batmobile early on in the game. You gotta wait. Uh, I'm so used to that. It's so satisfying, but they don't let you do it. Until you... Oh, yeah, I have to upgrade my suit. I forgot. It's like one of the things that cool new suit can do. I still have um, the old school Bat Batman suit with the underpants on the outside. It's tactical underpants, though. Um, there's been some upgrades from Arkham City. It's a little bit more plated, but, you know, he still has the underpants. I appreciate the underpants. I'm hoping Superman Legacy Superman has the underpants on. Fingers crossed. Honest Dave says, Seed of Chucky is the worst Chucky movie. Um, some people like it, I guess. Some people like the goofy humor in it, but yeah, it's not my kind of thing. Uh, it just is a little too, uh, too far into self-parody for my taste, where it just is a little too ridiculous. More focused on, like, making very dated, like, jokes that will become so dated later, like Martha Stewart, like, making more Martha Stewart jokes and jokes about Britney Spears or whatever. Some, just, I don't know, some really just fucking stupid jokes. Uh, some people like it, though. Some people really like the the actual seed of Chucky. Glenn and Glenda. Not for me. Yeah, I don't know. Not for me. <laughs> Do I come in the Batcave? Start messing with all your stuff? So I guess Oracle drinks Diet Mountain Dew. It's nice that she has like a kind of holster for her soda in that fucking wheelchair. Now this is the first time in a Rocksteady Arkham game that we actually see Barbara. She's an unseen character in City and Asylum. She is seen in Origins, but that's a prequel. It's the first time we actually get to see her like as an adult working for Batman. Different voice this time. We don't have enough time. I miss, uh, I miss her old voice, but, uh, oh, whatever. Bruce, I spoke to Dad. I hate lying to him. He'd kill me if he knew I was still in the city. Caesar asks, is this game played on PC? It is. Himself it's the PC version. We'll stop, Scarecrow. I recommend playing this version over, um, the console ones, just because you can actually play it at 60 FPS. Uh, you know, also, you, you know, I'm playing it at just, um... Okay, actually, what am I... Okay, what am I graphics? I, I believe... Yeah, 2560 by 1440. So just a little off from 4K, but you can play it in 4K or even beyond. So this is the closest thing to a current-gen version of Arkham Knight available. Um, hopefully, they make a, you know... They touched this game up for PS5 and Xbox Series consoles because, I don't know. Jim, we've got a way to I can't go back to 30 FPS. I won't. God. I'm playing Starfield on my PC. It's I'm not me. playing it on an Xbox because I want to play it at 60 FPS. I, I can't do it. I, after the PS5 
can't do 30 FPS anymore. And thank you, Slim Clown, for the Super Chat sticker. I appreciate it. I like hamburgers, too. Thank you. But yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I'm spoiled, you know? But I just love fucking 60 FPS. That's part of why I didn't even bother getting that, um... That, uh, Gotham Knights game. Because it was only 30 FPS. And I maybe they updated it, so now it's 60. But, um... Cash told me about. Yeah, I just... I don't know. And, you know, I have since upgraded my PC, so I could play Gotham Knights at 60 FPS, but, you know, I'll wait for it to go on sale for, like, 10 bucks, you know? I, I'll wait for that. It's still... Anytime it goes on sale, it's, like, 35, 25 bucks. They can go lower. Um, I played the demo for it. Wasn't so into it. Crawberry Strush says PC version of this game was broken at launch. That's what I heard. I didn't play it at launch. It's still not a great PC port, but I'd still prefer to play this over the uh, PS4 and Xbox One versions. Just because it's, you know, higher frame rate. You know, that's just how it is. Let's head on down to Panessa Studio. Actually, is that Panessa Studios? Or am I... Yeah, this is Panessa. All right. I don't know why Batman's headquarters is in a film studio that sounds like Penessa Studios. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess... Yeah, I don't know. Because it would have been cool to have the Batcave, like, accessible in this game. I guess they wanted a movie studio just to have, like, a special level later, but they didn't want anybody getting into the Batcave, whatever. I don't know. I wanted a headquarters within Gotham, but, you know. Could have had, like, a Batcave underneath, you know, Wayne Tower. Uh, Ricky has a super chat. Thank you. What DLC did you get? Skins or story expansions? I have all the DLC on the PC version and on the PS4 version. I played this first on PlayStation 4. So I got all the DLC. The only DLC that's missing on PC, though, is the um, Adam West skin. You can get the Adam West skin for the Batmobile and the um, and Robin, but you can't get it, and also Catwoman, but you can't get the 66 skin for Batman himself. That was still PlayStation exclusive. And I think there was some other exclusive DLCs for PlayStation, but, you know, it, it sucks. And Crawberry, oh man, I miss Crawberry. Okay, let me get Crawberry asks, how do you feel about the Arkham releases on the Nintendo Switch? I would have ate up these games getting re-released on Switch if they came out sooner. But now I have, like, a Steam Deck. I played through all the games again on Steam Deck. So, it just, uh, you know, a uh, Switch release doesn't do anything for me now. I, I would have loved it. I would have loved it years ago, but it's just too late. Um... <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'm glad more people will hopefully get to play the games I need to buy in a more convenient way. Directly. I honestly don't know how this game is going to run on Switch. Is the power wind I'm kind of doubting it. Maybe with, like, a lot of compromises, like The Witcher 3. But, yeah. Not looking forward to how this game will look on a Switch. Like, I'm a little scared of it. Greetings to you, Skyway. All right, let's see. Uh, w uh, BMLED 100 asks, which one is better? Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974 or Halloween 78? My favorite is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, of course. But, you know, as a franchise, you know, I'm more into Halloween. Like, I, I like more of the Halloween movies than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, at the very least. Um... You know, I like Michael Myers better than Leatherface, but as just the one movie, uh, more of a fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But uh, Halloween, I'd say Halloween is probably my second favorite. Second favorite horror movie, yeah, but... Man, as a franchise, though, you know, I'm definitely more obsessive over uh, Halloween sequels to an, an alarming degree than the Texas Chainsaw sequel, that's for sure. Thank you, Jared, for the Super Chat sticker. Look at that Corgi. Having a good time asking me how's it going. Hell yeah. It's going pretty good. All right, I got my Power Witch. 
Now to expose some payloads. All right. Z-Man says Halloween 6 theatrical is the best. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a more, I don't know. There's some interesting ideas in the producer's cut, and it's a more consistent movie than the theatrical version, but I don't know. There's just some goofy shit in the producer's cut, but it's a more, you know, it's a more consistent film overall, though. Like, it's an actual vision. Now, I don't like these Power Winch segments of Arkham Knight. Um, you know, it just feels like they're really stretching things to try to give you reasons to use this Batmobile for every scenario. But, all right, fine, fine. He's creating ramps so he can get around on top of this uh, rooftop. All right. You know, in Batman Begins, he could just he could just naturally drive on rooftops. He didn't need to like pull shit down or anything. He could just hop on the rooftops. It wasn't that cool. All right. Got to go into battle mode to navigate these corridors. This is all just a really long tutorial for the Batmobile. <laughs> It's like, oh, man, it's brutal. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking with this Batmobile. It's secured to the wall. Oh, yeah. I can't move it using the Batmobile. Time Maybe to take a... The car's weight. Time to take a little from Batman Forever's playbook and scale up a wall with the Batmobile. Man, these buildings are built tough. They can fucking support the weight of the Batmobile. Crazy. Tevye says, Halloween 6 is bad. It's a bad movie, but it's a movie that I enjoy. I enjoy watching either version. Um, it's just, it's got like a lot of baffling stuff and it's pretty bad, but you can tell, you know, it's one of those things where it's the first Halloween movie that was really made by like a hardcore fan. And when you listen to the interviews from the writer of Halloween 6, He's like, really, it's kind of, well, actually, I mean, the director of Halloween 6 did not give a fuck about the movie at all, but uh, Joe Chappelle, I believe, not related to Dave. Um, the writer, he was like super obsessed with Halloween where he would just write, he would like submit fan fiction screenplays for a six Halloween movie to the Akkads and shit. Just like all kinds of just nutty ideas for like what a six Halloween movie could be. And, like, you know, it's very sad listening to the commentary for Halloween 6 by the screenwriter, because he's, like, he f he was caring so much about all the little details, but, like, anytime he talked to the director, he'd just be like, I don't, I don't care about any of this. Like, just shut the fuck up. Like, it's just a little sad, because it's, like, there's, like, supposed to be one moment in Halloween 6 where Michael Myers is supposed to... It's essentially where Michael Myers makes his first appearance in Halloween 6 in Smith's Grove. He's supposed to emerge from the shadows like he does when he emerges in the original movie and slashes at Laurie Strode. There's supposed to be a scene that's written in the screenplay where that happens. But when the screenwriter tried to explain that to the director of Halloween 6, the, the director was just like, I don't know what you're fucking talking about. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. So it doesn't really read as like an homage to the original Halloween in the actual final film. It's just kind of like he just kind of pops out of the shadows. It's not like this cool, sudden, like... It's not this cool, like, gradual thing where he's popping out of the shadows or anything. It's just like, oh, man. Ugh. You know, it just not everybody's going to be on the same page when making a movie, that's for sure. All right. Now, let's save a hostage. All right, let me see. Okay, uh, Honest Dave says, Unpopular opinion, the Dark Knight is too long. Um, I, I don't really feel like the Dark Knight is too long. I feel like it's long enough to tell a story. I do think Dark Knight Rises is a little too long. Um, a lot of long stretches with no Batman too. But I do like that movie, but it is, it is, that one I did feel like was a little too long. Very, very close to three hours. Um, you could really feel the length of the film in that case. But I feel like Dark Knight, Dark Knight is fine how the it is. The powering the antenna. 
I can't use it right now. I always forget they switched around the buttons for the detective mode with the Batmobile button in this game. It's very disorienting. Not a big fan of it. Five soldiers. Lots of lots of choices in Arkham Knight I don't really like. Need to reach a vantage point to draw them outside. Matman says, I keep thinking that's Hugo Strange announcing shit. Yeah, it's kind of sad, because Scarecrow basically fits the same role as Hugo Strange from Arkham City. It's just, this is the guy you think is the villain, but he's not really the villain. Um, that's an unfortunate thing about Arkham Knight, is it feels like a bit of an ego play from the studio Rocksteady where they were like, we don't need Paul Dini to write us a Batman story. We can write our own Batman story just fine, but it kind of rehashes ideas. We will meet the Arkham Knight, the titular Arkham Knight soon, and everybody guessed who the Arkham Knight was going to be before the game was released, and it forced Rocksteady to have to lie and say, no, that's not who the Arkham Knight is. The Arkham Knight is a totally new character. That we completely made up be easy just to, to try care. to throw people off the trail because they realized yeah we're actually not that clever we're not great at writing these um writing these stories unfortunately oh well hey, hear that? Someone's out there. You too. Go xavier the god has a super chat doc mortal kombat and what's your oh mk means mortal kombat i forgot that new mortal kombat game came out it feels like, I don't know, I know the last one came out, I know Mortal Kombat 10, no wait, Mortal Kombat 11, yeah, now we're on Mortal Kombat 12, um, I know Mortal Kombat 11 came out in 2019, but it still feels like it came out so soon, I guess because they didn't make another Injustice game in between, it just feels like, another Mortal Kombat game already? I guess they're done with Injustice games, I guess, they're like... Let's just focus on Mortal Kombat. Fuck it. We're not good at this Batman thing, you know. Alright. Let's uh, kick this guy's ass. You're a little bit more uh, better at sneaking up on guys in Arkham Knight. You're a lot more mobile in this game. You can kind of... You could just kind of jump down at a guy and sneak attack him. It's a lot more, um, just because I think they just did that just because they throw so many more enemies at you in these stealth situations. They're like, all right, we need to make it a little easier to take down some of these guys. Make it a little quicker, a little more simple, more streamlined. You feel more like Batman. You don't have to, like, if they stick together. saunter up to them anymore. Lucius, I've got a hostage situation. Three gunmen. I need to take them all. You know, Mr. Wayne, I'm just kind of like an engineer guy. More like a businessman, sort of engineer guy. I don't know if I can send it, Lucius. Pull this shit out of my ass this quickly, but all right, I'll give it a shot. Gotta love Lucius. He's always on top of things. Always reading Batman's mind. I need a new suit that can instantly kill guys. Don't worry, Mr. Wayne. I got one on its way momentarily. Here we go. The Batwing is not playable in this game, though. Ethan Hart is a super chat. Hey, Doc, do you have any plans on reviewing the Willy Wonka movies on the Gulag? They're kind of horror adjacent. Kind of. That could work, actually. Especially the original one. Like, I rewatched the original Willy Wonka because I gotta prepare for the new Timothy Chalamet movie, of course. And I always forget just how intense the, um the river raft ride scene in the in the movie actually is like it's fucking crazy how intense it is like there's just a random shot of a chicken getting beheaded just cut in the middle of it like it's so fucking freaky you gotta appreciate it like they went for it they're like we can get away with this i don't know how they got away with it with a pg rating but you know they did it Time to suit up. Lucius finally figured out how to make one of these suits without underpants on the outside. I'm sure that's Batman's first thought. Where are the underpants? What? I guess Lucius just didn't have the time to finalize the underpants design. But I did appreciate they still gave you some underpants in the stories. At least a little bit of his 
more classic Arkham City, Arkham Asylum suit. At least in the opening. It wasn't just, yeah, he's wearing this cool movie-style suit suddenly. You gotta kinda play a little bit to get to this part. It's a badass suit, though. I do have to admit. Well, Mr. Wayne, let me walk I kinda wished the, the Batman suit, the Robert Pattinson I'll suit, was a little bit more like this. I could see it has some influence from this game's suit, but man, seeing a suit like this in live action would be pretty fucking sweet. With this kind of shock absorption, you'll be able to put more force into your... Content. Mario F. asks, Doc, have you reviewed the Tom and Jerry Willy Wonka movie? I forgot that was a thing. But I haven't, I haven't reviewed it or watched it, but I... I think, I don't know, I think Warner Brothers, they have a thing where they made like a Tom and Jerry Wizard of Oz movie just to renew their copyright of the Wizard of Oz film that they acquired from MGM. So they just made that movie just to like, you know, just renew all the uh, iconic elements because the book is public domain. And if they let the movie get, go public domain, then anyone can make like a Wizard of Oz thing that looks like the, the classic movie one. So they're like, okay, we need to make sure that doesn't happen. Let's make a fucking Tom and Jerry movie. I think maybe that Willy Wonka movie was also another case of yeah, we, we need to make sure, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, our rights to Willy Wonka don't lapse, because it's very, it's very, uh, lucrative. Now, these are optional tutorials for the suit. Not gonna do them. Let's just skip ahead. Let's just keep going. I played Batman before. I know what I'm doing here. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Gotta get up on top of the... Wait, do I? Oh, no, no, yeah. I think I know what I'm doing. The Batmobile's powering the antenna. I can't use Move it in right close. Now. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. I was like... Is faster and more All right, there we go. By getting close without being detected... I can now, when they first revealed this game, I was a little afraid of these fear multi-takedowns, because it seemed like... Because they only... They didn't show, like, the conventional way Batman takes out bad guys, so I was afraid they're... Going forward, the whole game was just going to be these automated sequences where you instantly take out guys. But no, it's just for these. It's just like a little bit of a bonus you can do in uh, Predator maps, Predator challenges. Help me. You don't have to do it, and you can't just take out a whole room of guys. You know, there's more rooms with a lot more guys you need to take out. They said you were quick, but I never saw anyone take down three arms. You can upgrade the uh, fear takedown, so you can take I'll down like five or six Thank guys. You. Starting out just Tell me three. You're though. Find Scarecrow. That son of a bitch needs to be stopped. Honest Dave says Tom and Jerry were fine until they made them talk. Well, in their defense, they only talked in that one movie. That one really crazy, weird movie um, from, I think, 93 or something. Um, that was a wild film. I've attached the uplink I guess they were just like, we can't have silent protagonists. We They're need to make them talk. The That'll be like what makes our film special. You finally get to find out what Tom and Jerry we'll sound like. But okay. yeah, I don't know. It wasn't great. It just felt like it didn't have to be a Tom and Jerry movie since they were just friends. They were hanging out, helping each other out. Um, I don't know. It wasn't great. Mr. Sex says, as a Scarecrow fan, I'm glad he has a primary focus. Both antennas yeah, he's just overshadowed. Frequencies across um, them. If I, can find both I guess they were just like, well... I'll know where Scarecrow is manufacturing. I guess it's a case of they essentially set up Arkham Knights to have Scarecrow as a main villain before they probably had an idea for a story in mind. So they were probably like, oh yeah, I know where it is. They pr were probably like, it was like in Arkham City where it's something that's not as vague. With Arkham City, it's just kind of a basic premise of there's, you know, a prison version of Arkham, but, you know, it gives us some leeway with the story. But with Arkham Knight setting up Scarecrow ahead of time as the main threat, it makes it so you kind of have to put him in a certain position, but at the same time, it's so clear they wanted to do something else. It was maybe an idea Paul Dini came up with first, and they went for it. 
The radio they were just like, microwave frequencies point to ace chemicals. Well, we got to do it now. I don't know. Toxin. Gotta have Scarecrow in there somewhere. But we really f want to focus on Jim, the Arkham Knight. I taste the fear ace chemicals. That's where we'll find Scarecrow. Impossible. I've had a team there ever since the evacuation started, just like you asked. Covenant Sire says, Tom and Jerry also talked in the shorts, too, though it was generally only for gags. Oh, yeah, they'd say, like, little joke Hold things. Yeah, I sure are. I'm on my way. Yeah, they'd say shit like, uh, and then, you know, they'd scream. They'd say little things, but it was just like, you know, just a little joke. They wouldn't have, like, conversations or anything. It wouldn't be quite the same. It'd just be, like, the shock value of, whoa, they're suddenly talking, and they have, like, a funny voice that you don't expect. Whoa, that's crazy. Okay, I gotta level up. Forgot about that. Uh, King of the Fat, thank you for the, uh, super chat. Doc, what are your thoughts on Charles Martinet retiring from voicing Mario? I think it might be a, a forced retirement, unfortunately, um, but they're handling it in a way where it's, you know, making sure he's still around, he's still, you know, in the Mario scene, they still acknowledge him and give him respect, but I do think it's one of those things where it's like, we want to have, like, a younger guy, like, a younger face for Mario after the movie came out, um... But, you know, I listen, I've listen. i listened to the voice of Mario. It's still unannounced who voices him in Super Mario Wonder, but it sounds the same. So it's just one of those things where it's not that big of a deal. But uh, Now, I'm not a big fan of this game's... I, I do like the amount of skills you can get in Arkham Knight, but at the same time, I'm not a big fan of any game where you're kind of... I don't know. Like I, I like the fact that like, you have to bank skills in this one, which I guess that means, you know, that also comes with the fact that skill points are much more frequent in this game, but at the same time, I just like the fact that in the previous games, like, one skill point got you one thing. Like, look at this. This one costs six skill points, so you have to, like, save up skill points. Ugh, God, I, I'm not a big fan of that. Ugh. Let's see. What do I want? I don't know. It's hard to decide. And some of them are locked starting out. Okay, let me see. Um, critical? Oh, yeah, that one's good. Um, I think I'll go... Well, we weapon steal? Um, uh, let's... Uh, okay, yeah, let's go with critical strikes. All right, let's do that. All right, let's keep moving. I guess I could use the Batmobile because it's here. Whoa, he just fucking crashed through that light pole. Damn. And I just got a notification from Creative Cloud. I hate Creative Cloud. I hate getting notifications from them. But it, they just made it so hard to pirate copies of Photoshop and character animators, so I have to use Creative Cloud now. Ugh, it sucks. So fucking expensive. Man, I can't all right. Time to head to Ace Chemicals. Honest Dave says, never got into kids' games. My mom started me on M-rated games. Whoa. Got a cool mother. It's like, all right, Sonny. We're going to play the hot coffee mod of GTA San Andreas. We're going to start you off right, young man. Let's, uh... Let's play this game already. <laughs> they should be able to tell us what Scarecrow's up to. What the hell? Come on, let's go. Come on, move. 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 Funny Clown says, even if they bring back Paper Mario 2 to Switch, I'm staying on Wii again. Um, I don't know. I, that Paper Mario Thousand Year Door remaster looks cool. It's definitely my favorite of the Paper Mario games. They did go downhill after Thousand Year Door, though. That's that's for sure. Super Paper Mario was okay, but man, oh god, everything after is not worth it. Not worth playing. But at the same time, you know, if you get Thousand Year Door, it'll hopefully send out a message that. You know, um, people want a Paper Mario game that's actually charming with, like, 
more of a sense of humor and with actual turn-based RPG combat, you know, Stay hopefully here. they'll... And I'll go find out. ...go back to making games like that. Also, you know, Super Mario Odyssey was fucking awesome. That felt like a serious return to the kind of Mario gameplay I loved from Super Mario 64. Oh man, that was fucking great. Made me really wish they would make another one already. Who knows when they'll make another one of those kind of Mario games, though. Well, I really love to make a lot of the fucking I need isometric and right. side-scroller ones. Uh, which are good, you know. I like those two, but man. Love another uh, open environment Mario game again. The only thing sources agree on is his name. The Arkham Knight. The Arkham Knight. Pack into their comms. I need to know what they're planning. Anything else? There's a crew of Ace Chemicals working. Arkham Knight feels like such a forced name for the villain of this game. I don't know. I need to find it's like, ah. Uh, we need to have Arkham somewhere in the name. Records, I'll be able to track them. But they couldn't figure out a way to do it besides calling the villain Arkham Knight. Even though he's technically really an already existing villain, they were just like, well, we need to have something Arkham in there, so let's just rename an existing villain turned anti-hero and just call him Arkham Knight. Fuck it. There Whatever. Five soldiers, each one armed and dangerous. Before I can access Skyler says, my parents only let down. me play Pokemon as a kid, and now I'm a full-grown adult with, like, way too many Pokemon plushies in her room. Well, you know... Pokemon's fun, you know, it's it's no GTA San Andreas hot coffee mod, but Pokemon's a good time to have. And you know, they don't make Grand Theft Auto plushies, so at least gave you an outlet to get plushies. Oh, honestly, I'm sure they have like a CJ plushie, I'm sure they have one of those somewhere. Just not as common. Get like a Franklin plushie, get a Trevor Phillips plushie. That's gonna be fun, actually. Oh, man. If they don't have a Trevor Phillips plushie, that's gonna be a real missed opportunity, I think. All right. Okay, that guy's... I guess this is the first actual real stealth encounter. It's pretty easy, but of course, I'm overthinking it. This guy better not fucking turn around. Go ahead. To keep us safe. That's what I'm talking about. Xavier de God has a super chat. Thank you. GTA 5 took out 180 vehicles slash aircrafts in June. I guess that's a sign they're making six. You know, they gotta put those vehicles somewhere else, you know? Or <laughs> it's gotta suck if you bought that stuff with the shark cards or whatever the fuck they use for their microtransactions. Yeah, what happened to Rockstar is a little sad. Because, you know, their real calling is that single player stuff, but they really like to. Really like to make those microtransaction purchases, though, so they just. It's a little sad, you know? I, I would like to see a, another GTA game a little sooner, but, uh, oh well. I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2 was good, though, so. Hopefully they can deliver on the sixth GTA game. Eh, I guess we'll see. But it is kind of crazy. There used to be a time like game develop game development has just gotten so staggered now, where it takes where it used to be there would be like a GTA game every. Well, I guess I don't know. They made GTA four, and then five years later they made GTA five. All right. And now it's been 10 years later, and there's still no sign of GTA 6 except for those leaks. It's kind of crazy to think. Like, and that's the... GTA is the, the, the best-selling game franchise, and the most profitable one. And they still haven't made a new one. They're just, like, still just making updates to that old one, the multiplayer updates. It's a little crazy. It's one of those things where it really has made... I feel like gaming really went downhill in the PS4 and Xbox One generation where you just stop seeing new games. Game development just took so much longer. There's just so much more focus on multiplayer campaigns and uh, microtransactions that you just stop seeing games as much. There was just this more focus on making a lucrative, a, a game a lucrative platform by itself. 
It's a little just unfortunate that, you know, there's just, I don't know. I feel like things have gotten a little better. Like, there's more of a focus on single-player stuff again, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's been a rough... It's been a rough decade, though. Uh, now, I will take a quick break, because I've been streaming an hour. Gotta use the little Wolfie Lights room, but I'll be right back. Oh, wait, no, that's not the right screen. No, that... Hope you enjoyed this live. Oh, man, I keep promising this. I need to make make that fucking video. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, this is the right screen. Oh, man. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Okay, let's uh, get to the right screen this time. There we go. Okay, good. All right, but like I was saying, I feel like the 360 and PS3 era was the last great era of gaming. Where, like, you know, you look at a company like Bethesda, for instance. Uh, on the 360, they had Oblivion, Fallout 3, they published New Vegas, and they had Skyrim. And then you go to the Xbox One, and they just made Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, and they re-released Skyrim. And now, you know, they finally have Starfield after all that time, but it felt like with Fallout 76, it was just a... They were just trying to find ways to monetize their games, like Fallout 4 and Skyrim had, like, paid paid mods support shit like just trying to find ways to make money off of existing games instead of just making more games like having like some kind of multi player platform like right. it's just uh man hopefully things can get better Data hopefully yeah data decrypting king of the fan has Someone's a very generous super chat wow i don't know how you could do this but What's most impressive about Mario Wonder is that not only is it the first mainline Mario game where you can play as Daisy, but also the first mainline Mario game where you can play as 12 Oracle. characters. I've got the ID. I remember there was the if time the when I can use the bat Miyamoto the was just workers. like, okay. yeah, we can't make Princess Peach playable in the games because her dress is too hard to animate in 3D, I guess. You know, you could play as Peach in... Uh, the American Super Mario 2, of course. But I guess they're just like, it's just too hard to, like, animate that dress, so we're just not gonna do it. Oh, well. Actually, let me, uh, okay, let me make sure, uh... Okay, yeah, I'm good. All right. Just wanted to get a good view of the chat. But now that, you know, they can have, like, 12 characters in a Mario game, it still bothers me that I can't play as can Red the Toad, though. Search for the workers. Like, I can't, why can't I play as Red Toad or Captain Toad? in these 2D Mario games. Why is that not an option? I've managed to intercept Why is it still just blue and scarecrow. yellow Toad? I want to play as fucking... Relaying it to you now. The fucking good Toad. I know it's like Mario's Red 2, but it's like... Who cares? Like, who fucking cares? Like, it's not gonna be confusing having, like, two red guys on screen. It's like, ah, oh, man. Let's find these hostages. Why do you hate him so much? Scared God says, Sweet, the doctor is in. Gonna be a great night now. Hell yeah, it is. This is his last night. I'll make sure of it. This is like just such a, such a non mini game. It's just press A on where the screen vibrates. Um, but I like the functionality Batman puts into his batarangs, though. They can scan through walls. It's pretty cool. 
All right. There are five ID markers showing up within the facility. Let's hope King of the Fat has another super chat. You could play as, uh, of course, Mario and Luigi, but also Peach and Daisy, the blue and yellow toads, Toadette, four different colored Yoshis, and Nabbit from New Super Mario Brothers U. Oh yeah, I do appreciate you. You can you can play as Red Yoshi, which is cool. I might go for that playing that game, but I don't know why you can't play as Red Toad though. It's like they have Red Yoshi now. Where the fuck is Red Toad? Why is that not a thing? What's going on? the hell's happening what is First what is to investigate the compound what has become of our country where we can't play as red toad all right let's uh, investigate this area and find these hostages let's start by heading in here should be easy to isolate some bad guys to beat the fuck out of all right. How do you like that? All right, now let's do an environmental takedown. These are pretty cool. They're very situational, but it's nice that you can do it. And this time around, I did do a correct tackle dodge, which is a new thing in this game. Not really a new thing since this game came out eight years ago, but still. All right. Oh, yeah, that guy's dead. Oh, man. Rest in peace. Oracle, they've killed one of the workers. Damn it. We've got to stop them. Listen, I've managed to hack into the militia comms network. Covenant Slayer says there was also a DS game where Peach was the main character and she was the Thanks, one Oracle. saving Mario. I found a way to get the that was a big hit with the ladies. They Finally play as, this. play as Peach. Super Princess Peach. I played a little bit of that. Definitely, um... Her, she weaponized her emotions in that game. So, when she'd get mad, she'd go on like a Gates fucking open. rampage. Time to bring in the car. When she'd get sad, she'd have like a, uh, you know, a, a water tear attack kind of thing. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. Skylar says, I wish I could go back and play Skyrim again for the first time. Skyrim got me through my most stressful college days. You know, it wasn't my favorite of the Elder Scrolls games. Um, more into Morrowind and Oblivion, but I did enjoy Skyrim. I did enjoy it, but at the same time, I felt like after playing Fallout New Vegas, I ended up getting really spoiled by how good a Bethesda-style game could really be. And like all the cool stuff that was in Fallout New Vegas the previous year was not in Skyrim at all. Like, Obsidian really showed Bethesda how they could, how they could be like writing their games and designing their games, but they're just not able to do it. I forget the Batmobile also has like a chain gun. Comes in real handy just to get like a little bit of extra damage in. Sir, he punched through the armor, just like you said. He's searching for hostages. Keep non-essential radio chatter to a minimum. He'll be listening. You are listening, aren't you, Batman? Honest Dave says Jeepers Creepers is the most overrated horror series ever. You know, it's not really my favorite either. Um, but you know, I'm a big fan of the director, though. You know, he's he's super cool. <laughs> All right. Time to save some more hostages. That's something I love about the Batmobile. It It's completely non-lethal to an insane degree where you can just kind of knock over bad guys and they just kind of get electrocuted a little bit. They just kind of get stunned. But you can still run them over. Run over their bodies. And they're to totally fine. They're totally fine. You know, I'm not killing them. I guess the... The Batmobile has really soft tires or something. It's very cuddly. It can't crush people to death. Uh, all right. Hey guys, how you doing? And now I finally have the eject strike. Eat rubber bullets, bitch. Okay. 
Time to save this hey, mofo. You're gonna let me out, right? Yeah, of course I'm gonna let you out. I didn't just fucking murder those guys for nothing. And here's our first good look at the Arkham Knight. Here we go. He stole Batman's look. Well, yeah, he looks pretty cool, though. You know. He's got that kind of holographic screen mask look. It's cool. Keep your guns trained on it. If even looks like he's planning to leave that room. I don't know what's up with the red and black camouflage, though. I don't know how that can help you be stealthy, but uh, I guess it looks cool. Aim for the weak spots, the shoulders first, then coordinate fire at the points where the plates meet. Please. Now, Arkham Knight is played by Troy Baker, who you would know as, like, Booker DeWitt and Bioshock Infinite and, um, Last of Us guy, uh, Joel from The Last of Us. He played Robin in Arkham City, but I guess they decided to make him play a uh, fucking, um, fucking Arkham Knight instead. I guess it was, no. he played Robin in Arkham City before he became a really big first. star. And they're like, okay, we got to give him a big role for this game. This was in there was just this huge Troy Baker fever was going on in the game industry where just every fucking game had to have Troy Baker in it. And I guess it's still the case now, but it was crazy mid 2010s. Just you couldn't play a single game without Troy Baker being either the hero or the villain. He played Joker in Arkham Origins. He was just in fucking everything. It's nuts, but anyway, uh, let's, uh, fuck this guy up already. Somehow he's completely immune to the bullets hitting him, but all right. Now, I gotta, oh man. Okay, let me, uh, finish off these guys and I'll uh, read my notification, but I gotta... Let me see what this says. I got a very generous, uh, generous pledge on my Patreon from Joshua. Thank the you. you. Though then again, I, I always forget. I think that's because he did a year-long pledge. That's a new thing on Patreon where you can just get a discount. Actually, you know, if you want to get a discount on a full year of Patreon, you know, you can now pledge for the full year of a tier. So that's probably what he did. Smart. I was like, wow, that's a really random number. Oh yeah, they have the new year-long subscription thing. Stay calm and tell me. Pretty nice. They've been running the plant for hours. They brought in trucks, weapons, soldiers, shipments of hazardous materials. They knew exactly what they were doing. He's producing his time. And, you know, I, 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 admittedly, I'm, Real I, you know, I do get a little, about you know, tired of hearing Troy Eastern Baker and so many things Where do I find when he does his normal voice, but he does have range, I, I have like no his idea. Joker voice is really I different. Is moving ahead with his plan. I do like it when they have him do like a totally different kind of voice. So but yeah, I mean, I'll stop him. But first yeah, now, after a while, it does start to sound like room. Booker DeWitt or Joel from The Last of Us. A little over, a little, you know, it just gets a little old after a while. Not hearing that yet. same exact voice and everything. How much worse can it be? But he's good, you know, he's good. Enough to cover the entire East Coast in fear toxin. Take your men and get out of here. Head to GCPD and lock it down. Keep everyone inside. Scarred God says, I like the first Jeepers Creepers, but yeah, the director is a piece of shit, no doubt. Yeah, I didn't really like any of the Jeepers Creepers movies. I do need to make some more Victor Salva videos. Um, I need to make a video about Powder, which is not a horror movie, but it's just so wacky and crazy of a concept for a film. I just have to make a video about it. Ugh. All right, let's level up some more. Let's see what we got here. Anything good? Well, eh, let's, let's hold off. Let's get some better. If I wait a little longer, I can get some better, uh, better upgrades. I'll get you to Commissioner Gordon. But I guess I'm at least happy Victor Salva wasn't involved with the new Jeepers Creepers movie. I heard it was the shittiest one ever. The one that, like, the worst one yet, but... At least they didn't involve him. He probably still got royalties, though. That's the thing they don't want to fucking talk about. Because that's the other thing. They're making a new version of Ren and Stimpy. And, you know, John Kay, the, um, the, you know, the, 
the child victimizer creator Ren and Stimpy, um, the groomer dude. He's not involved in the new Ren and Stimpy, but I'm sure he's still gonna get royalties. That's just the thing they want to try to hopefully downplay. They don't want people to think about, but yeah, you know, you make a new version of a thing somebody created, they're still gonna get fucking royalties. So it's just like, make a new Jeepers Creepers thing. You know, Victor Salva is still getting a check in the mail. Like, I don't, it's like, oh man, fucking great news. Awesome. Fucking wait until Victor Salva's dead before you make another thing, before you make Clown House 2. And yes, guys, it's true. They're making a Clown House 2. It's coming out this October, so look forward to it. I'm not making it up. No, I am. <laughs> but it sounds like it could be real, though. It sounds like a thing that an out-of-touch producer would, like, put together, being like, yeah, let's make another Clown House movie. Yeah, let's go for it. Not even bothering to read the Wikipedia page on it. Now, I love this part of the game. This is my favorite part, where I get to control a crane and place it in a very specific spot so the Batmobile is able to jump over gaps. My favorite thing in this game. It's so fun. There's, believe it or not, there's multiple times when you have to do this. It's so great, just, Batman can't just be like, well, I guess the Batmobile can't get up there, so I guess I'll just use my fucking cape to get around. No, 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 he's got to use the Batmobile. It's, it's important for him. All right. I made it, though. Okay, sweet. It's like, I don't know why Batman is just anticipating that he needs to use the Batmobile in the situations up ahead. It's like, couldn't he find a different way into the building around these tanks? Why do I have to blow up these tanks? I'm sure there's like a chimney, like in Arkham City, that he could go down instead. But alright, okay. I guess just any excuse to blow stuff up. It is cool to blow things up, though, you know? It is cool. Alright. Sir, the tanks can barely touch an Alpha Target's vehicle. Offensive capability way beyond expectation. Zach says, excited to see your October on Halloween ends. Yep, finished writing that. The plan is to write all the, all the, all the videos ahead of time and then just record them all at once. So all I need to do during the actual month of October is just edit. That's always, that worked really well with uh, Universal Horror Month this year. So i uh, gonna continue the strategy. I think it'll work out just fine. I got some other stuff planned, but yeah, the last video this year's o October is going to be the Halloween Ends Mega Review, which is based on the script going to be the longest video I've ever done. It's gonna maybe be over an hour. I guess we'll see. It's gonna be, you know, it's probably gonna be an over an hour though. How do I get this building again? I, I tore something down. But, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I gotta go through that thing first. I gotta kick these guys' ass first. Yes, of course. I almost forgot. Oh, fuck. I should have surprised them better. Oh, well. Sometimes they'll grab you from behind and you have to, like, punch them. Like, oh, God. I'm really fucking up in this room. Eat bat! Batman? Okay. Alright, okay. Thank you for uh, joining the super chat. Well, thank you for joining the channel memberships, uh, Daredevil NYC. Appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you for tomorrow's movie night of Psycho 2. Alright, now let's uh, get through this room. Oh, God. Alright. Explosive gel time. Man, I'm an hour and a half in, and I'm just now using explosive gel. You use explosive gel in Arkham Asylum within, like, the first half hour. It's crazy. I guess that's another thing is, like, they really downplay using explosive gel for the most part because they want to make you use the Batmobile. So instead they'll have, like, walls that explosive gel can't blow up, so you need to use the Batmobile instead. Ugh. Looks like Joker was making a meth lab in here. All right. Let's keep moving. That's too oh, yeah, that guy's dead. Now. 
I should have stopped this. Rest in peace, man. Wow, he looks really fucked up. Damn. Okay. Batman, look. I've been talking with Robin. I really think you should consider letting him help you. You're up against an entire army. She's right. We're a team. This city needs both of us. Scarred God says the fact that I Salva was allowed work. to make powder I for Disney is astounding. Do. Now do it. Jeepers 2 was such a Salva no, wet dream. You yeah, know you know. True. I need you to stay focused. It's fucked up because his worse. movies much worse. have very similar themes to them. So hard on where you go to something like don't Powder, and there's like, judgment. I don't know, there's just a very strange undercurrent with the teenage boy, where essentially I guess it's like, if Robin can't save I haven't seen it yet, I'm just familiar with it, but I, from what I, from what I've heard, like, it's supposed to be like an allegory for what happened during his trial, the, like, just... He's this misunderstood outcast that's just different. People just don't understand him or whatever. Like, oh god, it's... I don't know. Papa Jupiter asked, Do you know what happened to the second trick-or-treat graphic novel? I don't know. I haven't heard about that at all. I wish I knew what happened to the second trick-or-treat movie. I'm still waiting for it. Hopefully we'll get another trick-or-treat someday, though. Hopefully. I might be jumping the gun here. I don't think I need to use the Batmobile yet. I do need to use it eventually. Oh, wait, no, yeah, I do need to use it. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. There we go. I just need to get out of the way first. Okay, sweet. Oh, yeah, still need to use it. Daredevil gifted someone a Dr. Wolfula membership. Well, hell yeah. Cool. Joseph D. Egadioli has a super chat. Dude, powder is a snuff film. It's disgusting. Yeah, I heard they like, I don't know, they, they fucking found that kid. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's one of those things where it's so clear just Coppola just was a, big fan of working with Salva and just made another movie happen with Disney without That's three dead now. anybody knowing These animals are going to pay. without Disney eh, bothering to look into do, Salva's right? history at all. Because I think there was like a six year gap in time. I guess maybe people forgot. Hopefully it wasn't a thing where it's like Disney looked him up. They actually did a background check on him and they're like, yeah, he's still okay. You know, he could still... Still work on this, uh, fucking family movie or whatever. I don't care. It's whatever. Okay. <laughs> Talking about a lot about Victor Salva tonight. It's kind of fucked up, though, because I had heard of Jeepers Creepers, but I had never seen the movies. This is high. Before I heard about who Victor Salva was. So I knew who Victor Salva was, what he did. And I didn't bother watching them until I made like a video uh, on, on the first one. But I still haven't seen any of the sequels. I just hear they're bad. I don't know. Uh, saw the first one, but only because of making a video about it. Um, made a clown house video during the Edgelord 2022. 2020 year where I fucking made intentionally made videos about controversial movies um, That was a big year in 2020. I made a cannibal holocaust video made a fucking Poughkeepsie tapes video made a What else did I make that year? I did the clown house video. I remember that. Oh, yeah, I made a fucking human centipede video It's a fucking crazy year Okay, um All right Let's, uh, sneak up on these guys. Hopefully I'm going the right way. Yeah, I think so. This looks different. It all kind of blends together. Man, Batman's greatest sidekick isn't Robin. It's definitely Vince. Without these Vents, he'd be nothing. Oh, man, I hate that about this one, though. In Arkham City and Origins, you could slide into the Vents. But in this one, you can't do it. And I don't know why. It was pretty nice. 
Made things really fast. Made it so you didn't have to button mash the A button to open up these vans slowly. Oh, God. Just one of the many reasons why Arkham Knight just isn't as good. All right. Eat box, jackass. Okay. Oh, fucking... Yeah, they throw these martial arts guys at you really early in Arkham Knight. Aw, oh, shit. Whoa! Oh, I could have sworn I pressed the counter button. Damn. I think I did, it just didn't register. Oh, well. Whoa! I don't think so, pal. Glenn Welsh says some vents can be slid into. Okay, I guess it's just, uh, I guess some of them just can't be slid into, and I was just like, well, I don't know. I, I think there's, I don't know, there's a special kind of vent you can slide into in this one. Oh, yeah, and they introduced, they introduced doctors as enemies you can fight, and they can, like, revive enemies you knock out. Not a big fan of those guys at all. Not a big fan of anything that can kind of take away your progress, but oh well. It's okay. You're safe. You're too late. We're both already dead. You know about the bomb he's building, right? Where is Jonathan it? Masters says, won't I lie, I do have a soft spot for this game, flaws and all. You know what that means. Hey, yeah, you know, it's, it's still a good game. It's not a bad game. I just don't like it as much as the previous three, you know. Gets out there. The story just, chaos. I don't know, doesn't work for me as well. I'm getting you and get to the, the gameplay is just not as good because of the Batmobile. And I wasn't a big fan of some of the changes from Arkham City to Batman's moveset. Like, he's got a lot of better mobility in this one, for sure. He can glide around just so much better. He, it's practically flying. But at the same time, I'm just not into, like, I don't know, taking away some of his moves from Arkham City. Also, I also felt like they did a better job color-coding enemies where you can kind of more intuitively fight a certain kind of enemy. Now enemies just kind of have... It's the, the same problem with Arkham Origins, where enemies just kind of had color coding that just kind of blended together, so... Whereas in Arkham City, you can instantly tell if a guy needs to be, you know... A, you can instantly tell if a guy needs to have a blade takedown used on him, or if a guy is, is using... Or if a guy has, like, body armor that you need to do a beatdown on, like... It was a little bit more easier to read, and I guess maybe they just wanted to add to the difficulty by making it something you can't intuitively read. You just have to, like, be paying attention to what they're... what they got equipped, but I don't know. I just like the intuitive aspect, the kind of more video gamey stuff, where it's like, yeah, I just... That guy's red, so he's got a knife. I need to take him out a certain way. I, I, I dug it. All right, yeah. Ross Ferguson asks, what is your favorite Batman movie? I think the best one as a movie is The Dark Knight. Um, I do have a soft spot for, you know, Tim Burton's first Batman. But uh, I do think, I don't know, the one I, I kind of feel, I don't know. It's all the right, uh, I don't know. The, the one I've been, I don't know, I, I really like the Batman the new Matt Reeves Batman movie. I don't know. It kind of hits the right spots. A lot of areas. It feels like it... I don't know. It feels like it just has the right amount of comic book and realism to it that really works for me. It's very long, though, but I also... It just has more of a detective story, which was really cool to see in a Batman movie. So I just... I don't know. All right, this is the first boss battle in the game. I remember struggling for the first time at it, and I might struggle this time, too. I guess we'll see. I guess I'll focus on taking out the... Oh, shit. Taking out all the little guys first. All right. Now, where is Arkham Knight? There he is. So, Arkham Knight is supposedly inside that helicopter, and, you know, you just gotta keep shooting at him. That's it. But you also have to avoid, you know, his projectiles, of course. You mostly have to use the Gatling gun because... Oh, sh oh, shit. Okay, I gotta really pay attention to where... 
these missiles are landing. Oh shit, oh shit, okay, there we go. You just gotta keep fucking Gatling. Gatling him, taking out his missiles before they uh, fire. You know, um... And this is pretty much all the major boss battles in this game, unfortunately. There's no, uh, thing where you're fighting Bane or anything on foot with your fists. Nothing like that. Um, nothing cool. It's just, uh, you know, mostly just you're inside, um, your tank firing guns at, uh, helicopters and, uh, bigger tanks. And, you know, um... Uh, I guess they kind of just gave up on boss battles. They weren't super great at it, I guess. So they were just like, let's just, I don't know, not bother with boss battles anymore. It's whatever. Um, oh man, I'm getting my ass kicked. Ah, oh, hate the tank. Uh, oh God. Where the hell did he go? There he is. Almost got him. Okay, yeah, all right, got him. Yeah. Just barely, though. I'm gonna need to fucking upgrade my tank. That's for sure. I need to upgrade this tank because I'm gonna get my ass kicked a lot. I might end up doing a lot of level grinding between these streams because I feel like I'm gonna need more of an edge when I uh, fight some of the tougher tank battles. Oh, God. I can handle playing as Batman, but the Batmobile, surprisingly challenging. Surprisingly challenging. The worst challenge, of course, is having to get out of the Batmobile to press buttons. Just, God, just give up on the Batmobile, Batman. It's a lost cause. Ugh. All right, whoa, soft landing, there we go. All righty. That was an even cooler landing. These two were lucky. Scarecrow's forces have murdered the other workers. Bastards. Take them back to GCPD, but be careful, Jim. Time Lord Boy says, does sound like a dull game. It's a good game, just... I'm going to show Crane what Not a big fan of the Batmobile, you know? Oracle, I need that route to Scarecrow. I sort of wonder if they made another game like this, if this wasn't Rocksteady's last Batman game, if they would have kept this amount of Batmobile in future installments. I would hope they would take uh, feedback and kind of take it easy on the Batmobile, but I guess we'll never know since Rocksteady is like a totally different company now and they're not making Batman games and they're probably make, currently making their last game ever. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty sure the Suicide Squad game is probably going to be announced as their last game. The game will sell poorly after an eight year gap of no Rocksteady games, then Warner Brothers would be like, all right, we're shutting down Rocksteady now. Um, you know, they had a good run, but they made one bad game that took too long to make. So, uh, no more Rocksteady. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Come on, okay. Just, First, come on, need to just... Focus on stopping Scarecrow. Come on, then just... Deal with the night. Why is it... I guess this is as far as it goes, yeah. I, I thought it could go a little farther, but okay. All right. Glenn says, I think the problem with the bosses is that Batman is so skilled and learns so many abilities that developing challenging bosses becomes a real struggle. And that's why they've often, they're often so underwhelming. The, the issue is really just Batman's combat system from Arkham Asylum is built around him fighting just normal street goons. But when you introduce the bigger guys, the combat system just doesn't really, it can't, as easily adapt to like, you know, a more skilled combat, you know, a more skilled combat expert. It just doesn't scale as well. To where you have something like Deathstroke's boss battle in Origins, which looks cool, but at the same time it is just, use the counter, keep using the counter, and then every now and then you get some punches in. It looks cool, but it's still pretty much just you know, a regular fight with a regular henchman, just he can counter you in return and you have to counter him and just like, it just goes on longer. But it's not one of those things where it just feels like 
something really different. It looks different, but it's, you know, still feels like you're still fighting one of the regular enemies. It just looks cooler. Uh, and it's more challenging, but it... I guess that's a... I don't know. I guess that's something they could have maybe focused on in this game. Like, Batman, I think making, I don't know, like, I don't know, enhancing Batman's combat suite of skills to where he can, like, fight actual, you know, martial artists, and it isn't just a series of counter dodges and shit like usual, but I don't know. The soldiers are covered by that sentry gun. I'll have to take them out quickly to avoid detection. Johnny Tong says, beat this game on both New Game and New Game Plus. 100% is a real slog. Tell me about it. I didn't 100% the regular game until like I think a year or two ago and the Riddler trophies are just so fucking bad to collect in this one there's just so many and they're just so annoying like oh god that sucks yeah I don't know and you know there's technically more Riddler trophies in Arkham City but I just liked I don't know it just they they were just a little bit more simple so you could kind of handle uh, all those different Riddler trophies. There's just, just just so many, and they just, like, are so complicated in this one. It's just, ugh. But at least in New Game Plus, you don't have to get all the Riddler trophies again. At least they figured out that problem. Batman. But I still haven't 100% in New Game Plus. I need to do that. But you have to do all the uh, side missions besides Riddler, though. You can do what you can, Jim. I'll deal with them. Eventually, I'll fully 120% this game someday. I 100%ed the previous ones, but I never bothered them. Uh, never bothered with this one. All right, let's uh, keep moving. Oh yeah. Wait. Okay. Uh. Oh yeah. Yes, I need to keep using the Batmobile, of course. You know, it is satisfying when I lift off these uh, control panels. Oh, man, that looks so cool. Batman, I don't know why you need that Batmobile. You're fucking... You're fucking powerful on your own. All right. Glenn Welsh says there's too much Riddler stuff. Yeah. They need to take it easy. If they ever make another Batman game like this, have some Riddler stuff. Honestly, I I would prefer if they just ditched Riddler trophies, if they make another Batman game in this mold, which I, I'm hoping for. But they just give Riddler an actual, like, story, where it isn't just, I have hidden hundreds of trophies for you to collect, Batman, over and over again. Like, it was cool this the first time around, but, you know, I think they can just make him more than just the collectible guy. Uh, some of the worst stuff in this game are... It's Riddler-related. Like, Catwoman's Riddler DLC in this game is, like, some of the worst shit I've ever played. So fucking frustrating to do. Like where you're basically at the end of the Catwoman Riddler DLC, you have to... You're basically on top of a platform that randomly gets electrocuted and it's gradually becoming more and more electrocuted. And there's laser beams randomly approaching you while you're trying to fight other enemies. It's just such a fucking hassle to play. I don't know what they were fucking thinking with that. Just horrible. Horrible to play. No. All right. I did like in Arkham City the Riddler being the challenge map guy. I wish they stuck to that because I'm not big a big fan of Arkham Knight's challenge map approach either. I like that. I guess they have some more like I don't know unique challenge maps, but at the same time I did like basically I don't know I I don't know. I've just run a simulation based on the mixing chamber capacity. I guess I just She's like the approach in Arkham worse. City better. I like just I the approach in general. Uh, the city. Just because they had, like, I don't know, in Arkham City, they had every map that you go through in Arkham City 
as like a replayable map that you can do. But in this game, they don't really have that. Um, they'll have like some maps you can replay, but other ones will be more gimmicky. Not as big into that. I guess they're called AR challenges in this one. Not as big, uh, big on them, honestly. Okay. But let's keep moving. We gotta kick Arkham Knight's ass. Gotta figure out how to make that happen first. Okay. Uh, I think it's just I open another door. I think. I had to fight that room for some reason. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right. It's right over there. Just love doing this. Definitely doesn't get repetitive having to open the door for the Batmobile over and over again. It's great design, Rocksteady. You did a great job with the Batmobile. I appreciate it. Where it, Honestly, it just kind of feels like... It's more about the Batmobile, and the only times you actually play as Batman, it feels like it's just for the sake of making it so the Batmobile can get somewhere. It can't go usually. It's like... Well, all right, we'll give you an excuse to fight as Batman in this room where you can uh, take out these guys, and then you could open another door to let the Batmobile through because it's really a Batmobile-centric game. It's not about Batman. It's it's about his car. Um, like, I need to get the Batmobile again through this next door, so I need to take out... Oh, yeah, okay, so this is the mixing chamber. Okay, so this is a, a stealth room, but he's still gonna need the Batmobile up ahead for this next room. Eventually. Uh, <laughs> at least it's some stealth. At least that is that. Tonight is the night that Gotham changes forever. The night it becomes a waste. KDB says, Doc is the coolest Batman I know. Well, thank you, Katie. You're the coolest Catwoman I know. Alright, let's see... How can I get down there without... Yeah, I should be able to... Well, yeah, this should be fine. This is the first real stealth challenge map. The previous ones were kind of just a test. Once I clear the room, I can focus on... Eddie Huerta says, Next Batman game should just let us use the Bat Jet and Bat Cycle. The Bat Jet would be pretty cool, though. I'm not sure... I'd be a little afraid of people, like, doing Gotham 9-11s. Um, not sure how they'll end up making that work, but uh, it would be cool to see uh, the Bat Jet handled in some uh, fashion. It was just pretty much just fast travel in Arkham Origins. Um... But really cool fast travel. I guess it's a, a lot like your spaceship in Starfield, though. It's just fast travel. You barely get to really fly your spaceship. Oh, why did he do that? That's something I'm not a big fan of in Arkham Knight. He'll just do, like, these random things, like, just gliding straight down. And it's like, I don't want him to do that. I know it looks cool, but I don't want him to... Like, he just did it again! I don't want him to do that. I want to just do a little clean glide. I don't know what the fuck. Oh, God. Oh, whatever. All right. There's no good way to... Okay, okay. Actually, no, there isn't any way in there. All right. This could... I'm ready. Now fill that freak with lead. Okay, so I can do a silent takedown, but... That guy will see me, so... Oh, shit! Oh, God damn it! All right, let's get out of here. Didn't see that other guy. All right. I was like, all right, let's uh, sneak up on these guys. Damn it. Oh, well. Okay. Um, let's just fear take down these guys. Let's just do it. Um, King of the Fat says, Dr. Wolfula, will you be watching Godzilla Minus One? That's a strange name for a Godzilla movie. I heard about it, but uh, I haven't really seen the trailer. I'm more of a King Kong guy, not really a Godzilla guy. Not really a Kaiju guy in general. I respect people who are into Kaiju, but never was just, never was all that into, into Kaiju, though. I did get the Criterion collection of the uh, Showa era, the original era of Godzilla, the classic era. And I watched a few of them, but, you know, just not not as into it. Big fan of King Kong, though. Give me some more King Kong. 
All about that giant monkey, though. Emergency. Last radius is at 46 miles from Don't start working. All right. Okay. Let's see. Who am I going to take out next? How many guys? Okay, there's just four guys left. All right, sweet. I'll take out that guy. He's nice and isolated. Oh, shit. Oh, damn it. Okay, wait. No, wait. I'm, I'm at it. Okay, I thought I was in view of the turrets, but I'm not. What? Wait, oh shit. I am really dropping the ball right now. Let's get out of here. It has been a while since I played Batman. I need to get back on top of things. The element you carry is vital to my plan. My toxins designed Let's do better. Perfected over years of clinical trial. The speed All right, take down time. Okay, sweet. All right, just two guys left. Should be good. Yeah, we're good. Okay, yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, where did they go? There they are. Okay, so... They're kind of still together, so let's wait for them to... Alright, that should be good enough. Ah oh, shit, he's too aware of me. Damn it. It has the potential to reach the farthest corners of the continent. An entire nation. No, no, no. Don't do that, Batman. I want you to knock him out. Come on. Come on. Oh, what? The fallout will last a century. Whatever. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Josh Messing asks, Doc, what's your favorite Weird Al song? I'd have to go with Pokemon. Spelled P O L K A. Poka. Pokemon. Um, which was on the Pokemon 2000 soundtrack. It's a classic. It's. I'm sure it's a Weird Al song that he cherishes. I'm sure it's one of his favorites. I'm sure he uh, sings that song d during all of his tours. Um, just one of the best, you know? Just great. The door is open. All right, time to kick Scarecrow's fucking skinny ass. Do you really think you've won? Lindsay H says, "I love the Scooby-Doo do content." You you I do too. Hopefully, you guys checked out that uh, Mystery Begins review on the Gulag I channel. Because you don't get more Scooby-Doo content than that. How do I shut it down? Let me go, or she dies. What are you talking about? Barbara Gordon. Oh no. He got to Barbara. Get out of there. Now. Relax. No one knows I'm here. Um, Barbara, I think you spoke too soon, girl. Nothing hurts like losing one of the family. No, oh no. no, I have to say Barbara, but this place is about to blow up. All right, Alfred, I gotta save I Gotham and Barbara. I've been trying to contact Miss Gordon, unfortunately with no success. Keep trying. Gavin Elrod says, have you watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Not really. I've been in the same room where the show is played, but I've never... Never really watched it, watched it. All right, let's uh, do the most fun part of this game. You can't stop it. I know, I'm not trying to stop it, but I can reduce the blast radius. And what will happen to you? That doesn't matter, find her, Alfred. This is a great sequence though, because it shows Batman is willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. Let himself die He's to save the city he loves so much. The city that killed his parents. Okay, so you have to very slowly and very carefully pull these out of their containers, these canisters. Once they're out, then you have to very carefully walk them over. Um, it's just an amazingly fun game mechanic. It's one of my favorites. It's just so good. I guess it's kind of like the Killer Croc sequence, uh, or 
I guess the great white shark sequence in um, Arkham City, where you just have to be very careful, very slow and careful. But um, with less stuff to do besides just holding down the the stick. Um, but it's great though. Like this is it, it, this really makes it feel like I am the Batman. Where is she, Alfred? I have no idea. It's my fault they took her. She was All right, time to lay down some more pipe. She's allowed this to happen. All right, this one went a little faster. I feel like they go a little faster every time. Don't you see? This is what he wants. What happens if I go super fast? Oh, no. Can't risk it. This is too tedious and slow of a sequence. Can't risk having to do it over again. All right. Come on. Get in there. All right. This is very sexual, if you think about it. He's just kind of sliding his tubes into these holes very carefully. Because it's, it's their first time, after all, so he wants to be gentle. Yeah. Batman, what are you doing? Oh, boy. Neutralizing agent. Crawberry says, this part on mouse and keyboard fucking sucks. I can't imagine playing a, a Batman Arkham game with a mouse and keyboard. Never attempted it. These games, I feel, are just meant for controllers. I can't imagine doing the combos and everything with a keyboard. Uh, no thanks. No thanks. Goodbye, Alfred. I am, like, such a PC player, but I... I almost never use my mouse and keyboard to play anything. Even something like a shooter where I know it'll play better, I'll have better aim and everything. I still use fucking controllers because it's just what I'm most comfortable with. I'm playing, I've been playing all of Starfield just with a controller. I could use my mouse and keyboard, but it's just not gonna happen. Get in there, baby, come on. Let me slide that in, all right, there we go. Oh boy. Hell yeah. All right, time to slide in one more tube into this tight hole. All right, baby, I'm just gonna ease it out and then ease it back in. Here we go. All right, okay. Oh no! I thought you were dead, Joker! How is this happening? Oh! All right, time for some exposition flashback time. Hell yeah. My favorite part of a Batman game. When the story stops so something can be explained. Here we go. So, the game fully switches to you playing as Commissioner Gordon. The rest of the game, you play as Commissioner Gordon. You don't get to play as Batman at all. So for the rem remaining um, 18 hours of the game, you have to play as Commissioner Gordon. He can't do anything. You can't pull out his gun or anything. Um, it was an, a controversial decision, but I can understand why they went with this in this direction. Now, I'm going to take uh, a quick break again. It's been another hour, and then I'll be right back in less than a minute. Sit tight. I just got to grab a Fresca. All out. All right. Be right back.
Alrighty, I am back. Let's keep keep playing. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, I need to start streaming some Scooby Doo games. I realize after this game, I'm gonna be out of Batman games. I gotta start doing some Scooby Doo. Okay, let's see here. Um, how do I get in here again? There was some trick to it. Oh yeah, just press A button. How the hell am I supposed to get in? Voice pattern analyzed. Identification confirmed. Welcome. Crawberry says the boss fights were the only thing I liked about Origins. Everything else just felt slow and clunky. I couldn't stand the gliding. Yeah, I mean the gliding is the same. Like everything is the same in Arkham City, but they made the world so much bigger and had like huger buildings and had buildings you couldn't get over, for the sake of like the limited console capabilities at the time where it's like they couldn't have a real open world gotham and have it be detailed like that so instead they had to create artificial obstacles in your path so the game could actually load all right on the ps3 and xbox 360 and wii u it was one of those um really late gen games that was just pushing the consoles a little too hard so, just made it so it wasn't as fun to glide around, and also, I don't know, I don't know, I feel like Arkham City got, like, the timing just right for the counter system and everything, but I it always felt off in this game and in Arkham Origins, it just didn't feel as precise. It just, I don't know, I guess maybe because I'm just so much more used to the specific timing of Arkham City... The change of timing between Arkham City. I just played that one so much more. Just the change in timing just became so much more, I don't know, hard to get used to, I guess. Let's see what's up with these guys. All right, let's see what, let's see who's in here. Let's see what, uh, all right, there we go. Okay, no, wait, no, that's, oh, okay, I'm talking to this guy. You have to get me out of here. Huh, this guy kind of looks like an old version of the Joker. That's strange. Josh Messing says, you should stream Night of 100 Frights. I might just do that. All right, well, let's talk to this guy. Let's see who's in here. Oh, wait, no one's in here yet. That's a very special cell. Well, let's, uh, this looks like a babe. All right, let's see who's uh, who's in this cell. All right. Oh, oh shit. What the fuck's wrong with your face? What the? Jesus Christ. Yeah, you might want to... Work on your skincare routine. Jesus Christ. Whoa. Man. God. Let's talk about a butterface. Oh, jeez. See what's up with this guy. Don't tell me. Oh, God. You are the police commissioner. Your face was on that billboard they replaced with mine. Uh, why do you have to rub it in? What are you waiting this is kind of like a Joker version of Joe Bob Briggs. Joker-fied Joe Bob Briggs. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, let's check out this guy. What do you want, pig? Coming in here eyeballing me. There's nothing really all that Joker about this guy, but okay. All right, hopefully when I turn around, nobody will suddenly jump scare me, because I don't like it when that happens. I really don't appreciate it. Um... Oh, shit! Ah, oh, fucking Batman. You need to see this. Dickhead. What is this place? Who are these people? Before it kills random him, randomer guy asks, who do you blood. think will be I'll the next the villain for the next Batman film? I know. We tried um, down. We well, I know they're making Batman the Brave no. and the Bold. They're going to have... They're going to have Damian Wayne as the Robin in that. So they might make Ra's al Ghul or Talia al Ghul the villain in that. Maybe team them up with another villain. But then again, I feel like maybe that might be too much of a rehash of Dark Knight Rises and Batman Begins. So maybe they'll go in a different direction. Maybe they'll... I don't know. I feel like what will differentiate the new DC Extended Universe um, movies from the, the Batman movies is that they'll go for more of the crazier, super-powered villains that uh, 
Batman movies don't usually use, like, they don't usually use, they've never used Clayface. They don't really use Mr. Freeze after Batman and Robin. They could maybe do a new take on Mr. Freeze that's cooler. They don't really use some of those more over-the-top villains, so for those you can't hold him new, that will. new category of Batman movie, they might go in that direction, just to others. set them apart from um, the more grounded Matt Reeves five, thing, I where four. I guess Matt Reeves says he wanted to use Mr. Freeze, maybe, but I don't know how it would necessarily work. I think it could be interesting to see... A Mr. Freeze in a the Batman 2 because they do set up Gotham covered in water just completely flooded so that is a nice place for Mr. Freeze to flourish lots of water to freeze essentially but uh, can you hear me guess we'll see guess we'll see now, Mark Hamill famously announced his retirement after Arkham City, and I think it was just to throw people off the trail of him returning for this game in some way. Joker is a character in this game, but he's basically just in Batman's head in a very convoluted way. I guess to sort of explain it is essentially the Titan formula from Arkham Asylum mutated inside the Joker, inside the Joker's blood, and the Joker managed to spread his blood to hospitals, and of course also within Batman himself in Arkham City. Um, so after that happened, people became infected with the Joker's blood, and now they become the Joker through this convoluted process of a kind of sort of real disease that I guess can like overwrite somebody's brain. I don't know. It's it doesn't make sense. It's like I don't know. It's a little goofy, but uh, you know, I guess they wanted to have Joker come back somehow. <laughs> They're like, um, didn't want to totally commit to Joker being dead, so let's uh. Let's just have him inside Batman's mind. It's like an imaginary friend. Uh, <laughs> oh, All right, let's uh, head on out. Uh, Magteeth Matt says Joker in this game is Johnny Silverhand from Cyberpunk 2077. That is true. I definitely, I always felt like Johnny Silverhand felt familiar to me, and I realized, yeah, it's like kind of just an imaginary friend character that's just in your mind. So I guess, yeah, um, Cyberpunk 2077 is kind of like just if you mixed the plots of Fallout New Vegas with Arkham Knight, I guess. <laughs> but I think, um, I think Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill is permanently retired from playing Joker now that Kevin Conroy passed away. I think that's what he announced, but he definitely wasn't really retired from playing uh, Joker. But he, you know, Scarred, Scarred God, I guess, got confused by what I said. Mark Hamill is, um, he said he was retired from Joker, but he still it's voice okay, acts, you know. I managed to reduce the blast radius and prevented the toxin from... It's like, I don't know, there's just like, there's no reason for him to retire from Joker uh, before Kevin Conroy passed away. So it was definitely just a way to Green trick way. people into thinking Joker was, was really dead. Just like, all right, people are going to call us out. So we need to have okay. some, we need to have Mark Hamill say he's done. Like, hopefully people will believe Joker won't come back. Hopefully. Until now, but this match, it's... He still played Joker in things. He played Joker in Justice League Action. He played Joker in um, the Killing Joke animated movie they did that sucked. Um, yeah, so he still did Joker in things. Like, so he really went Thanks, back Alfred. on his uh, word. See, I said you wouldn't let me down. But he's the best, you know. I'll take I'll take Mark Hamill Joker when, when I can get him. GCPD prisoner detention. I'm heading there now. But yeah, without uh, Kevin Conroy around, it definitely would feel weird to bring uh, Mark Hamill back for something with somebody else playing Batman. It's just, Mark Hamill's the best, but, you know, he just had such a, he was just such a good fit for Kevin Conroy. It's just like, you know, you have to have the best Batman with the best Joker. If you have, like, the best Joker with, you know, 
a lesser Batman. It's just, you know, it's just an uneven dynamic. It just doesn't work as well. You're afraid. You will... But, you know, it also, I guess, opens the door. I mean, Kevin Conroy's passing is unfortunate, but at least, you know, Mark Hamill stepping aside does open the door for our other it's voice actors to play these characters. Need to take out the enemy and hopefully, you know, the GCPD do a good job in their own way. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the GCPD and uh, do something. I don't know what it what it is I need to do here, but uh, oh yeah, I need to escort Gordon. Oh God, this part's great. I gotta go. Batman's here. What's wrong? Um, DJ Ray asks. Well, DJ Ray Ray asks, Hey, Dr. Wolfhula, which Joker actor would you say is the best other than Mark Hamill, Jack Nicholson, or Heath Ledger? Oh, oh, between Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger, then? Um, I don't know, you know, they both really commit to the performance. I feel like Jack Nicholson is a fun, more comic booky Joker. But I, I feel like, I don't know, Heath Ledger is just a better version of it just because, I don't know, I gets more into the Joker's head as a character. I'll be standing um, there when you do. Just, you know, I don't know, makes makes the Joker feel like somebody who could exist in the real world in an interesting way, an interesting take. But Jack Nicholson is fine. But, uh, you know, I guess I'll go head ledger. But um, as far as other voices, though, I would say... Um, I don't know, I really did like the Kevin Michael Richardson Joker from the Batman cartoon from the mid-2000s. Wasn't so into how he looked necessarily, but I did like his voice. I would like to hear him come back. I feel like the voice was pretty okay. Pretty good. Your priority is to apprehend the commissioner. I want him alive. They did eventually have the Batman uh, Joker wear his, you know, comic book style costume, but they still made it so he's like, sh doesn't wear shoes. And it's like, I don't want to see the Joker's feet. I, I don't know why they insist on me having to see the Joker's feet. I don't need that. It's not necessary. Um, he can wear shoes. It's like, well, why don't I at least have like some, some nod to his original design on this show where he didn't wear shoes. So let's, have them shoe That's the last note. It's the like, why would you want to walk around Gotham without wearing shoes? Dangerous. For God's sake. Like, the place is... To the clock tower. Gotta be littered with broken bottles. It just doesn't make sense. All right, Gordon. Time to get inside, um... My, uh... Time to get inside the Batmobile car seat, Gordon. I have Gordon. to stay in the Batmobile and protect Gordon. All right. I want to do that. Is he in the Batmobile? Oh, yeah. I gotta get in the specific spot. <laughs> All right, Gordon. Come on, get in your car seat. I kind of feel like it's a missed opportunity. They didn't make like a roller coaster based on this Batmobile. Where it's like, I don't know, this would be a perfect ride. Where you, you're you at the ride queue area and you're get, you get into this and it's like you're getting transported by Batman through Gotham. It'd be a fucking cool ride. Um, but uh, at the same time... What have you got, Alfred? We don't have any good Batman rides, unfortunately. We got, like, roller coasters and Six Flags called Batman, based on Batman, but, you know, we don't have, like, a really cool ride. Ugh. As you can see, Miyagani Island is heavily Universal needs to license... I don't know. I guess Six Flags has exclusive rights to DC stuff, so I guess I don't know. They can't really... D Six Flags doesn't have, like, the... I guess the... I don't know. The cash to make a really cool Batman ride, unfortunately. Ugh. Cosmic Wanderer says, Robert England was uh, great as Riddler in uh, the Batman cartoon. I agree. He was also... there now. Pretty cool casting. Um, if you haven't seen the Batman cartoon version of Riddler that Robert England plays, Freddy Krueger, he plays like a, he plays the scariest version of Riddler. He plays a, uh, he plays, <laughs> oh my god, uh, Marilyn Manson looking version of Riddler. It's like, oh man, shit. Marilyn Manson asking me riddles, the scariest thing imaginable. 
I feel like, though, you know, I did like Robert England as the Riddler, but he didn't get a lot of great stories. Um, like, the first Riddler story was a gimmicky one where one of the detectives was... There was lots of gimmicky stories in the Batman cartoon, unfortunately, where some of the cooler villains didn't really get a great opportunity to shine, where, like, the Riddler's first appearance was... One of the detectives, I think, had to pretend she wasn't working with Batman, so she was the one solving Riddler's riddles, so she had to, like, be face-to-face -face with him. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, I guess it's also an issue Batman the Animated Series had to deal with, too. Like, all the Riddler Batman the Animated Series episodes are kind of more on the gimmicky side, where it, the first one was... Like, they're cool episodes, like, in a fun way, where he's, like, a game designer, so... There are militia troops in the first one, he, like, builds a maze that's really cool, but it's not really that much of a Riddler kind of story. And the next one, it's, like, a virtual reality episode that's cool, but it's, like... It's not really a great showcase of Riddler. Um... And then the third one was about Riddler becoming a minor celebrity. Beca like, he leaves, I guess, like, he finally gets out of Arkham Asylum and he becomes kind of like a famous guy. Like, you know, rich people want to hang out with him at his, like, a novelty or whatever. And then he just ends up getting back into committing his old crimes. But, yeah, you know, never really got, like, a good... I don't know, a good mystery kind of Riddler sort of story in, in Batman the Animated Series. And then, you know, New, Bat Batman, uh, New, Bat New Batman Adventures didn't really even have a Riddler story. He just kind of had, like, a couple cameos. It's a shame, you know, it's a shame. Because he can be a cool villain. It's just, you know, he always just ends up kind of getting gimmicky stuff. I did like, you know, the Batman movies version of Riddler, just for the sake of, you know, he has more of, like, a detective story for Batman, but at the same time, he is a little gimmicky in the sense that he is just based on the Zodiac Killer. It's just, what if the Zodiac Killer was the Riddler? Um, what if instead of, like, ciphers, he left riddles after he killed people? You know, eh. All right, let's take this guy out first because he can heal guys. Let's do that. All right, uh, Scarred got asked, any plans for an upcoming Texas Chainsaw Massacre game stream? Um, I'm going to give that a, a rest for now. I'm going to wait for the DLC to come out, which might be soon. Uh, it's already been leaked, the Black Nancy DLC character. Hopefully I'll get to be able to play as her because you're forced to play as Leatherface. One person has to play as Leatherface. Um, hopefully they figure out a way to a solution to that. So I don't know, but we'll see. I uh, I'm gonna wait for DLC because I already streamed it twice. They were really long streams. You know, eh. I also did a review. I, I, you know, I give it a little bit of a rest for now, but I will eventually, you know, stream that some more. All right, should I, uh... Okay, I can't do the fear takedown yet, because they're not afraid. But they're all very, uh, close together, so, uh... Let's wait until they're a little spread out. That should work. Yeah, that works. All right, sweet. Hopefully they don't turn around. Are they the cash for this gear? The biggest enemy to Batman is the is the henchman turning around. That's the one thing he has to worry about. All right. Actually, it would be kind of funny to see Mad Hatter as the main villain in a live-action Batman movie. Just like, just like you have to wait like three or four years for another Batman movie, and it's like, yeah, here's Mad Hatter. You know. Uh, it's kind of cool. Oh, man, I, had a feeling this would I feel like they kind of ruined Mad Hatter's character in the in the darker and grittier 80s and 90s comics where he became like more of like a pedophile kind of guy who's like, I don't know, really into little girls named Alice. It's a little, I don't know. 
can't really use him in things as much. I remember they made the Robin Year One comic about Robin's early years as a crime fighter. And one of his first cases that he handles by himself in that is the Mad Hatter is running a human, like a, a child human trafficking operation. And it's like, wow, this is just too dark. And it's like a, it's like a, an adventure Robin as a 10 year old is going on, like busting a child human trafficking operation. What, what is going on? This is a little too extreme, but all right. A little too much, but okay. <laughs> okay, I need to finally fucking level up some more. Oh, I only have four points. Damn it. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's see. Blade. Yeah, let's go with the blade dodge takedown. Oh, it, it's pretty man. useful. Okay, let's see. Glenn Welsh says, Batman is owned by DC, and DC is owned by Warner Brothers. They wouldn't license out Batman to other competing companies like Universal. You say that, but Warner Brothers has already already licensed out one of its most lucrative properties to Universal. They licensed out Harry Potter. Like, Harry Potter is owned by Warner Brothers, and, uh, you know, Universal has really uh, cashed in on the popularity of Harry Potter, like... Every Universal Park now has, like, a Harry Potter-themed area. The upcoming Epic Universe is going to have more Harry Potter stuff, so there is a precedent. They could make it happen. They would just have to pay a lot, and I think the issue is that Universal has already licensed Marvel, so I guess there's a sense of, you know, you can't have the Marvel stuff and also have DC, but they could do it. You know, it's just, I think maybe that might be part of the contract with Marvel is that... They can't have a competing company's superheroes in one of their parks. That might be it, actually. But they could do it if, you know, the Marvel stuff wasn't there and if Six Flags' deal wasn't already in play. All right, time for a uh, Colleen? freak out vision. Some more scarecrow-induced Joker, uh, Joker uh, sequences. All right recreation of the controversial sequence in uh, Batman the Killing Joke. Alan Moore's and Brian Bullen's uh, controversial story where, uh, you know, Barbara Gordon gets shot in the um, in the abdomen and is no longer able to walk. Now, Alan Moore, when he wrote Killing Joke, always intended it to be a non-canon story. But Killing Joke was so popular that DC decided to just, you know, make it canon going forward. And uh, acknowledge the fact that Barbara Gordon, you know, is just confined to a wheelchair. Um, a lot of people weren't so into it, but I feel like her becoming Oracle, you know, gave her an interesting role and gave, you know, people who are handicapped, you know, some representation in comics. But now she's just... Batgirl again, and now there's not really any characters for... Yeah, I guess there's Magneto, I guess. I don't know, I guess there's that. <laughs> Magneto's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if there's, like, another DC equivalent, though. Okay, I should read this. This is what happens when you drag your friends into this crazy little game of ours. Oh, I do like when you, like, look Not away and Richard you're suddenly in a different room. Oh, man, it's always a little Max. cool trick they pull off in these games. The Much more seamlessly in this one. I remember in Asylum, you had to, like, Jim Gordon had go through a door into one room and then go through a door in another room and the room completely changes. Now they could just fucking seamlessly change the room around you as you turn around. It's amazing. I'm sure you'll understand. I mean, it's not like he went out and got his daughter killed. Well, not yet, anyway. The night's still young. Ricky says, The Killing Joke movie isn't that good. I like the Joker's tragic origin story, even if it may not be true. I mean, the comic is great. The Killing Joke comic is great. It's just the animated movie kind of sucked. Um, kind of sucked. Mostly just because it introduced, like, because, you know, there isn't enough plot in The Killing Joke to make into a movie. 
So they introduced that dumb, like, prequel section where... I guess, I don't know... To add some depth this between Batman and Barbara's relationship, they have sex with each other. Like, it's Great just a little weird. I don't know. But then again, Bruce Tim seems to be very into... Bruce Wayne and Barbara Gordon fucking each other. It's a running theme in Bruce Tim produced stuff. He produced the Killing Joke movie. He also, of course, gave us the animated series and eventually paired up Bruce Wayne, Barbara Gordon. It's revealed in Batman Beyond they were definitely a couple. Um, so it's just a little strange. I don't know. It's a little weird. Like, stronger than you realize. him dating his best friend's daughter. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little strange, like, who's, like, half his age. I don't know, it's not, I don't know. She's my family! My daughter! She's all I Xavier the God says, Doc, you mean Professor X, not Magneto. I fucked I up. Magneto is not in a wheelchair. Never! Professor X is? I don't know. <laughs> not as big of a Marvel guy, though, admittedly. Only into Spider-Man. Really, um, I'll do this on really looking forward to Spider-Man 2, the game, coming out next month. Gonna definitely play the hell out of that. It makes me, I don't know, that game make, makes me double sad that we're not, we don't really have another Batman game like that coming out this generation. Rocksteady's busy with that Suicide Squad game that looks like a waste of time and resources, so, yeah, it's a bummer. Considering... Just imagine a Batman game made by, I guess, ins Insomniac. Like, no, wait. It's, yeah, yeah, it's Insomniac. I was thinking, like, wait, is Naughty Dog? No, Naughty Dog does Last of Us. Insomniac makes those uh, Spider-Man games. It'd be so fucking cool. I need to find out what happened to Barbara. They covered their tracks by disabling the clock tower security cameras. It would be cool if to I see Magneto in a wheelchair, though. System. Because he'd be very dangerous, because a wheelchair wouldn't really stop him. He'd be able to, like, move it himself with his mind. I guess, I guess just like Professor X, though. I guess they'd be kind of... I guess there wouldn't be a, a whole lot of difference between the two. They'd be... Two sides of the same coin. Alright, so... This is, uh... I just gotta scrub through this footage. Find any appearance... From, um... The Arkham Knight. Taking a while. Okay, well, there's, uh... At least I think I'm looking specifically for the Arkham Knight. They probably took her in one of those vehicles. I need to confirm which one so I can... Try oh, yeah, okay. So, I, it's just a case of... Singling out this vehicle. There. All right, That's sweet. the vehicle they took Barbara away in. Those tires are Amertech D60s. I can program the Batmobile to track their unique tread pattern. It'll lead me right Ryan to says Magneto is in a wheelchair in an alternate timeline where Sentinels take over the world. That's pretty cool. Um, Joker's in a wheelchair now, too. Oh, God. Just imagine how powerful Joker would be. I'm, I'm guessing there's like an alternate timeline where instead of Joker putting Batgirl in a wheelchair, Batgirl puts him in a wheelchair. I was Cruel fate. Man, Joker keeps making cripple jokes. Damn. He's just got no chill. Gavin Elrod says, didn't the Spider-Man 2 game already come out in the 2000s? Yes, the one based on the Tobey Maguire movie. But they're making a sequel to the PS4 Spider-Man game, which is not based on a movie. And that one's called Spider-Man 2. I feel like maybe they should have just gave it a different name. Like, I guess maybe they're just like, yeah, let's just call it Spider-Man 2. Just because when people think of Spider-Man 2, they already think of the movie and the game based on the movie. But, you know, okay, all right. They maybe could have called it fucking Spider-Man something having to do with Venom. Because Venom's going to be in it. I don't know. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, 
I'm just following the fucking waypoint. I probably should use the uh, good old fashioned Batmobile. Oh wait, I guess I can't use it here. At least I like these sections where the Batmobile is completely unusable. It's like a nice little break. It's like, I don't have to use it. In oh wait, no. I do have to use it here. I have to, oh shit. Gotta go grab it. Because there's lots of tanks in my way. Papa Jupiter says, Wish Universal would bring HHN back to Islands of Adventure. I wasn't aware they did HHN at any point at Islands of Adventure. I always thought it was just at Universal itself. I guess they were just like, I don't know, it's just too complicated. But it would be so much better because the two, like, it would make more sense from a financial perspective because then you'd have people who would have to maybe get, like, Park Hopper HHN tickets. And then you also, you know, you have a less crowded part. Like, it's pretty annoying, um... It's pretty annoying in, how, in Universal just because it's so cramped in there, like... So if you had two parks with haunted houses, you know, you'd have, you know, less people in a single park, you know, you'd, they'd be a little bit more spread out. Oh, man, I, any excuse to have you riding the Batmobile, oh, God. And Alfred. <laughs> Lindsay H, does anyone go to HHN? I did, last Friday. Don't drop your guard. Had a so-so time, but, you know. I'm looking forward to next Thursday. I'll probably have a better time. I'm getting the, um, the early, the early HHN ticket. Where you get to go into Universal early for a couple hours. And then they put you in, like, a queuing area once the actual Halloween event starts. Alfred, the militia Should be fun. Device. It's burrowed deep into the road. Yes, I see it. Similar devices are being planted across the Meltdown 142 All says Spider-Man 2 a hunter's guide. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about necessarily that title, but I need to investigate that device. An alternate title, like maybe some kind of um subtitle to Spider-Man 2 just to separate it from the uh, previous Spider-Man 2 game and movie, but you know, whatever. Oh yeah, I got to get out of the fucking Batmobile to do this. It's like, wait, no. Get back in there. It's like if you if you step on the Batmobile a certain way, he'll get back into it. <laughs> Lindsay H says, "How is the Stranger Things maze?" You know, I barely remember what happened in it. Um, I guess it was kind of neat. They kind of threw in the demi -gor Gorgon as like a bit of fan service. Um, link to the Bat computer. But admittedly, I I've only seen once we're hacked in. The, I don't know, I've only seen two and a half seasons of the show. I didn't watch all of season three. I didn't watch all of season four, so I didn't quite know what was going on in the house. I didn't, wasn't able to appreciate it in the way, uh, you know, I probably would have if I was more familiar with what happened later in the show. I really liked the first season of Stranger Things, but yeah, I just... I don't know. I, I guess I need to give season three another shot. Give it another shot. I just, I don't know. Just wasn't so into it. I don't know why I'm just using the Gatling gun. Not a good idea. I got multiple weapons at my disposal. Gotta use them. Alright, well... So essentially, this is basically an introduction to one of the side mission things you can do where you have to disarm a bomb, but before you can disarm the bomb, you have to take out a wave of tank guys. It's very repetitive. It's the same thing every time. Um, I guess harder tanks are introduced in each one, but, you know, it's basically the same thing every time. Blow up some more tanks. These machines are relentless. Like you. Not my favorite part of the game, um, they don't hold back and they are not But uh, you know, it's You know, I've never really seen a Batman thing where he operates a tank the this much. I can use the but uh, you know, it's creative license, I guess. 
All right, let's disarm this bomb by revving up my engine somehow. All right, let's go. Let's do that. Okay, sweet. Most challenging part. Okay. How many uh, skill points do I add to? Let's wait. Country Shape says, I'm back. I can't sleep. I think the chicken nuggets I ate gave food poisoning. What I, what I miss? Um, I guess you missed um, Joker showing up in Batman's mind. That was pretty cool. Oh, I know. I'm not following this these tracks anymore. Well, yeah, I am following him, but I need to warm up the trail again. Slowly following these uh, car tracks. All right. First, I want to fuck those guys up. There's no way those guys survived that. Oh, they just got out. Okay, they're fine. All right. Let's fuck them up even more. Come on, guys. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, sweet. Mario F says, Thanks for reminding me about the Spider-Man 2 game, because I was just thinking about the Craven the Hunter movie that's coming out next year. Oh, my God. This game looks like fucking garbage. Oh, I mean, no, not not that game. The, the movie, that movie looks like garbage. The Spider-Man 2 game looks cool. Um, but yeah, that Craven the Hunter movie. Oh, boy. They're really trying their hardest to make Spider-Man's minor villains, like, worthy of movies by themselves. It's not gonna happen. Like, Morbius, Craven? It's like, it's, you know... I can understand Venom. Venom's pretty popular by himself, but I don't know. The trail leads into yeah. Island. <laughs> Lower the Mercy Bridge. I, I can't, um... It's kind of sad because they have Craven in the new Spider-Man 2 game. And I'm sure he's going to be so much cooler than the movie one, and people are going to be like, ah, oh, man. Isn't it sad? This video game one was just so much better. Like, and he's just, like, one of the villains in, in the game. Like, he's not... Like, it's not like... It's like, I don't know. God. But also, you know, if you're making a Craven movie, he needs to have that goofy... He needs to still have the goofy lion vest he wears. You need to you need to keep that. It's his trademark. And I don't remember him having that in the uh, movie trailer I saw. But then again, I could barely remember what happened in it. It's like, I don't know. Aaron Taylor Johnson keeps trying to make other comic book movies work for him. But, you know, he, he peaked at Kick-Ass, you know? The station's crawling. I'm sure, like, honestly, they were, like... To clear them out. After the first... Of, like, they're using to hack I'm sure, like, once them. Aaron Taylor Johnson got signed up for Avengers 2, they were like, let's just kill off his character and let's not bother no bringing him back. Yeah. It's not worth it. Uh, Better not. Alright, so I gotta take out that guy first, so I'm just gonna waste my fear mode I take down on these guys. Need to take out the, uh, RC helicopter guy first. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Um... Target lost! Spread out! I'm gonna check for casualties! Ricky says, I think Mr. Negative is a better character of making a Sony Spider-Man, Spider-Verse movie. I was like, that was something I was iffy about, uh, Spider-Man game going in just because they, they only showed Mr. Negative in the trailers and everything. So I was like, Mr. Negative is like the only villain in this game. Like, does he have like some better villains? But then it turned out Mr. Negative, you know one of uh, the Sinister Six in the game, and they have Dr. Octopus and everything, too. They wanted to make it a surprise, clearly. Um, and, you know, Mr. Negative was handled really well, too, where he really um, accentuated the other villains, but had his own unique arc. All right. Let's see. Okay, I need to get down to that laptop. I don't know why they just leave the laptop lying around open just for Batman to get to, but uh, at the very least, you know, I gotta take these guys out first. Okay.
Meltdown142 says, I'm curious to know what the plot is for the Aunt May movie that Sony is planning. Um, I hear she fucks in it. I hear it's all about just her meeting Uncle Ben for the first time and fucking. And then at the end, you know, they adopt Peter. But it's just all about, like, I don't know, just like Uncle Ben and Aunt May just getting horny together. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be, like, I don't know, people keep pushing for R-rated uh, superhero stuff, so, you know, I guess they're going for it in that way. It's like, I want to finally see... I want to see Aunt May in her prime in her mid mid 20s just getting railed by uncle ben like that's what I, that's what i want to finally see and they're making it happen i guess so in this game you can like slide down these vents and go down these like uh, lower level vents that's kind of nice they can also you, now enemies can see you in the vents which is highlighted in red so you have to avoid that they're actually looking out for that now which I guess I could just, like, pop out of this. Um, let's just wait for this guy to get clear. Um, okay, yeah, it's, it looks good. Oh, shit. How did he see me? Ah, oh, gotta get out of here. All right. Oh, let's get out of here. And, you know, I hope they kind of make, also, they make a uh, Bruce Wayne's parents spinoff movie, Thomas and Martha Wayne the movie. We just see, like, Bruce Wayne getting, getting conceived. We just see, like, I don't know, their wedding night and just them making Bruce. Like, just, like, just finally show us that. We've always wondered that part of Batman's origin story we never got to see. Like, how, how was he made? to finally find out the circumstances surrounding his conception. Like, that's the key thing. That's the key piece missing. We don't need to see his parents getting killed again. We just need to see... We just need to see parents getting laid. That's what we really need. I don't know why that guy didn't see me. Um, but I'll, I'll take it. All right. Papa Jupiter says, HHN was in Islands of Adventure back in 2001. The Marvel Scare Zone was so cool. All the heroes are dead and the villains are running the streets and Carnage is in charge. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. I forgot about that. That would have been cool to have now. But I think now, after the movies really started up, I think maybe Marvel was just a lot... It's just been a lot more um, protective of what... There's one guy left. Uh, protective of what you can get away with in the parks, like really controlling it more. Especially now that Disney is in control. I feel like maybe Universal can I feel like Universal would have added some more rides if they could. But it seems like maybe after Disney bought, men taken care of, I can bought Marvel, terminal to lower the Universal is just stuck with the Marvel area as it is. Really shitty and out of date. Just like filled with like, yeah, I don't know, just some really tacky art direction and everything. Just trying way too hard to look like a comic book. Instead of looking like an immersive place. Because I feel like, you know, if Disney wasn't in charge, they would have added some new stuff. But it seems like they probably just can't. Like, the, the costumes still look... Like, the costumes, like, cosplays look better than the superhero costumes they have at Islands of Adventure. So it seems like they're just not able to, like, like do anything new with it. Isn't that Barbara's job? Oh, right. In all the excitement, I almost forgot. Man, if only Barbara was around here. Not getting kidnapped. She could be doing this shit instead of me. I should know. See, I gotta say, Batman's a fast typist. You know? I don't get to see it as often, but uh, he really is. Is that a gaming laptop? No. Where is. Is that who I think? Oh, no. Enigma. Contact Riddler. Me ready with the bridge. Riddle me this. Oh, Riddler, you look like shit. He's wearing like a Hawaiian shirt version of his Riddler outfit. It's like, uh, it's a casual Friday version of Riddler. I know. It's because of what will happen to his friend. Where's your suit, dude? 
Dressed like a fucking slob. Alright, I gotta save Catwoman now. That is because you are no match for me. Edward. If I can remember which way to go, yeah. I don't have to remember. It's fucking waypoints. Did you think I would just forget our last meeting, Dark? Glenn Welsh says, yeah, Universal's Marvel area looks the same as when I went there in 2000. Nothing looks updated. Yeah, you know, if anything, they've taken stuff out. Um, but otherwise, it looks identical. And it's always been sad going to Universal just because besides Universal, like, no, besides Jurassic Park, they haven't really... They haven't really added a whole lot new. Or she dies. At least in Islands of Adventure. Lots of really kind of, I don't know, outdated areas like the Toon Lagoon area. It's got, I don't know, it's got a Dudley Do Right ride and a Popeye ride, but I don't know. Like, I feel like Islands of Adventure was just their attempt at making like a Disney style park, but they didn't quite understand what makes Disney work. Disney's all about kind of making making the their like theme park worlds feel like natural and immersive but islands of adventure just has like i don't know a tacky approach to that where you go to like to the comic strip world the area and it's just got like lots of just like lots of collages up of just different comic like sunday comic strips like it's not like trying to make you feel like you're in a different world it's just like you know, this is just like, you know, just a bunch of comic strips you've seen. Just, like, cut together, you know? Um, same thing with the Marvel Superhero Island. It's just... It's like a really tacky-looking, generic New York City with, like, giant cardboard cutouts of Marvel superheroes in the, uh, skyline. It's just... Uh, it just looks bad. Like, I don't know. Dr. Seuss's land looks horrible. At the very least, I guess they're starting to update the Jurassic Park area to make it Jurassic World, but... Man. Got a lot of updating they need to do. I don't know why they're even making a new theme park. They should just be trying to... Enhance the theme parks they already have, but, uh, whatever. Alright, let's interrogate this mofo. Riddler has Catwoman. Tell me why. I don't know anything, I swear. I just tied her up and left her inside. Why? What's Nigma's play? I ain't got a clue. I just brought it here and planted someone else's trophies nearby. Country Shape asks, <laughs> you gotta believe Have you seen low-budget indie movie Sparks? It's like a 40 to 50s period piece, but it has a shape-shifting serial killer as a villain. Um, no, I haven't heard of it. Um, guess I'll have to look that up later. Man, if only I could go to that theme park. Wow, Gotham has so many abandoned theme parks. There's one here. There's the Amusement Mile area in Arkham City. And then there's also... There's also a, the Batgirl DLC in this game that's a huge theme park that's abandoned. What's with all the abandoned theme parks? It's like perfect for these supervillains to hide out. I think it'd be the first place Batman would search, but he never does. It's always like, oh, Joker killed like five people. I guess now I'll finally check out the nearby abandoned theme park, see what's going on now. Uh, all right. Could have sworn we'd seen the last of Joker. All right. Batman? That had better be you, and you had better be sorry. I'm not sorry, bitch. Okay. Keep still. Are you okay? Perfect. What little girl doesn't dream of being Batman? You had her tied up and everything. We're leaving. Come on. You might be, but I'm not. I don't know why you would untie her. <laughs> Tonight, folks, we've got riddles galore. But first, let me introduce my beautiful assistants. Oh, I'm growing tired of my dependence upon the least useless dregs I can scrape from Gotham's utterly... All right, time to fight some robots. Why rely on others for help? Now, when you can uh, these robots have an interesting twist where they'll change color sometimes and make it so you can't... So, like, sometimes you'll have to fight them as Catwoman and sometimes you have to fight them as... Let's not waste any time. ...fucking uh, Batman. But uh, this introduces the T-1000 
teammate mechanic where you can on the fly switch between uh, one of Batman's friends. Later on, we'll see Robin and Nightwing. It'll be pretty interesting. But uh, starting out, it's just Catwoman. Aw, oh, I fucking ruined my combo streak. I thought that was it. Oh well. No doubt you enjoyed that, detective. It's the most fun you'll have all night. You see, Dark Riddler, don't say that. I have so many more fucking Batmobile sections. Ugh, God. With each challenge you complete, you'll get one little key. Collect every key. So essentially, Riddler's whole story is saving Catwoman, which kind of sucks because. She doesn't really get an active role in the main story of the game. She's just a damsel in distress. You do get to team up with her, trying to save her life, but... Kind of sucks that, I don't know, she doesn't get a, more of a major role in the story. It's just like this optional fetch quest I'll be back thing. Soon. You'll be back right away. Guys like Eddie let me be until I started Yeah, it's unfortunate. Nice I guess they were just like, I don't know. Gotta give Catwoman something, but... The main story is just filled up. Just can't make it work. Sir, I've regained control of the bridges. Good work. And just so you guys know, in this whole playthrough stream, I'm never gonna save Catwoman. That's not gonna happen. It's definitely not gonna happen. It would take fucking 20 to 30 hours. It's not happening. Not happening. You have to collect all the Riddler trophies, do all the puck, fucking puzzles. Not happening. It's not not happening. She's stuck. She's stuck here. It's never gonna happen. All right. Besides, you can't save all of Barbara. I killed half of her already. Oh my God. You're right, Joker. I can't save Barbara. Half her body's dead, so it's pointless. I'm heading to Mercy Bridge to pick up the trail of the Arkham Knight's vehicle. Miss Gordon's safety is on all of our minds, sir. Good luck. We're all praying for Barbara right now. I almost said Garbara. Garbara Borden. That sounds like like a Mad Magazine parody of Batman. They'd have like Garbara Borden. They'd have Roos Bane. They'd have Gick Drayson. Yeah, yeah, that's what they would do. That'd be like the naming scheme. Gim Jordan. It's pretty funny, you know. I, I gotta, I gotta work for Mad Magazine. Like it really writes itself. Meltdown says, "Have you ever collected every trophy before in any game?" I've collected. Well, I guess if you're talking about like um achievement points or the trophies that PlayStation has. I haven't, like, 100%ed any, uh, any of those kind of trophies, but I've gotten all the Riddler trophies in the Batman games, but not the, you know, the, uh, the trophy trophies. That, that hasn't happened. Hey, guys, checking out the Batmobile? Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Get the fuck out of here. Oh, you think you can get away, huh? Oh, look! Someone's dodging! Oh, let's see you dodge that, dick. Let's see you dodge that. I own you. I'm Batman, bitch. All right, let's go. Time to open up this fucking bridge. One moment, sir. I should probably warn you, there's a significant... Green Coke says, I've been watching you since I was 10. Keep it up. And you just turned 11 this year, too. Yeah. Pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. All right. <laughs> Okay. So it's kind of messed up to think about it, but if someone was, um, yeah, I don't know. When I first started making videos, if someone was, uh, let's say, let's say eight years old when I started making videos, they would now be old enough to drink. It's, it's kind of messed up to think about. Oh, boy. Blowing up some more tanks. That's what Batman's all about. I sure am. At least I would be, but it seems like it doesn't want me to go. Wait. Oh, I'm going this way. Okay. Wait, what? 
Oh, yeah, I'm still following the damn tracks. Oh, God. I forgot about that. Oh. Well, let's do it, I guess. We're getting there, you know. We're getting there. Crawberry says I've been sub to you since 2015. Hell yeah. That was a big year for me. And ironically, that was a year when I kind of went on a semi-hiatus for a bit. Kind of sucked. Really poor timing, that was. Drone feed offline. Get back! Well, you know, I'm more active than ever, you know? It used to be there would be, like, fucking three months between videos or something, like, something crazy, or even longer. Ugh. Not anymore. Oh, wait, no, I went this way. What am I doing? All right, let's rebuild this fucking trail. Okay. There we go. And now there's two channels we have. My channel and the Gulag channel. It's it's a whole new ball game. Can't wait to see Ben. Alpha target spotted. Northern sector Miyagani Island. Rattler's been hit. Come on. Uh. Oh, I don't think so, pal. God, I hate this. I honestly hate the tank battles. It's just, oh God, it's like. Why can't I be fighting guys with my fists right now? Ugh, man. Ugh. I really miss fighting with my fists. Ugh, that was so fun. I've fought in tanks so much more than fighting with my fists in this game already. Ugh, God, it's, it's so depressing. I guess if you have a tank available, you're gonna use it, I guess. I don't know. I'm gonna use it as much as possible. Ugh. There's so many tanks. Oh. Batman's taking out a drone. It's kind of funny. I feel more powerful as Batman, but I feel super weak as the Batmobile. It's very ironic. It's not. It's not as much of a power fantasy. Because these other tanks can really fuck you up. All right, where's that other tank? Come on, pal. Where are you? There you are. Sweet. Come, Batman. Just wait. Now let's continue. Country Shapes says saw your channel in 2015. Been subscribed to ever since. That's what I like to hear. It's Batman. You've been subscribed for as long as this game has been published. Eight years. It's so fitting. All right. Okay, yeah, all right. Should be just around the corner, I think. Uh, no, no, a little further, a little further. The Arkham Knight's vehicle swerved and crashed up ahead. It sure did. Well, let's uh, break this crime scene. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, let's head out. Car's empty. The Arkham Knight must have taken Oracle and moved on. I should examine the vehicle more closely. All right, now this is where I call it a night. It's been three hours, you know. Uh, we'll continue this game stream at some other point, so keep an eye out. Make sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss future uploads and streams. Now, uh, if you enjoyed this uh, stream of Batman Arkham Knight, October is just around the corner, so remember, follow me on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dr. Wolf Yellen. Oh, I guess X is what it's called now, Twitter. And uh, also, I guess, Threads, also at Dr. Wolf Yellen. Hopefully, eventually, Blue Sky. Just have so many more social media options out there. And also, just want to remind you guys, got a new video on the Gulag channel, the Mystery Begins Riff View, so make sure to check that out. Link in the description. And uh, I have a movie night of Psycho 2 with my Patreon supporters and channel members, so if you want to support the channel and get weekly Sunday movie nights every week, consider supporting. 
All right. Also, you know, I got some merch on my T Public store, tpublic.com slash user slash Dr. Wolfula. Now it's time to finally call it a night. Looking forward to sharing our October with you guys very soon, though. So make sure to keep an eye out. Remember, subscribe and click the bell. That bell is important. Click the fucking bell right now and make sure to click the like button, but especially click that bell. That bell gives me so much power. But anyway, thanks again for watching tonight. I've been your host, Dr. Wolfula, signing out. See you all next time. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed this live stream. Why don't you watch another thing while I have your attention?